Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Veldak, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And welcome back to Space Exploration, wherein we've got our second significantly larger barrel outpost set up. Um, I believe I've finished setting it up. I did some of this off stream. Um, let me just check. It wasn't, it wasn't like on an autosave or something, was it? Surely not. Let's go through the drills. We've got 20, uh, we've got 20 tags for core seams. Fantastic. Which means we've tapped everything. Well, we, we've tapped everything, um, if you ignore the fact that we've trimmed it down. Uh, what am I looking for? Entity. And core mining drill number one. Number two. Number three. Four. Five. Six. If we see, um, all four of these with stuff in them, we know it's working. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Fantastic. And can our trains reach all of them? I believe I've checked this already. Uh, but it looks like the answer is yes. Fantastic. That's a lot of stations on that one line. It doesn't matter, they're all individually quite slow. And yes, I believe that is working. Talem Grandmaster, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so we have been mining the barrel core fragments already even though we don't have a spaceship to take them back yet, or we haven't set those, set that up yet. But uh, as you can see, it is going to be a not insignificant increase in our barrel throughput. Um, now where's my spaceship? Here we go. Do I want to leave anything behind? Um... I'm just leaving this switched off for now, so it's not reporting back to central. Um, just until I'm sure I've set up uh, a couple of things at home. Couldn't sleep, so here I am. Arturis Lakik. Welcome, welcome. Hope you do a little better. Let the ASMR wash over you and have a nice sleep. Um... Let me just double check that I've configured this correctly. So I'm pretty sure these two are supposed to say 1180. Um, yes to anomaly. What, have I tagged this yet? I don't think so. Create a new pin. Barrel. Core fragment. Uh, no hotkey. And then... And then we can... Why is this miscellaneous? These are sorted by planet or star system. And this one just says miscellaneous. That's weird. 7am here, not bad for wake up. Fair enough. Okay, so I just want to double check on one of our other outposts, 1180 and 1180. Indeed, that is where the home address goes. And this one is our local uh, address. And once again, anomaly signal is one. Planet orbit 816 is Spiriso. Planet Orbit 816. Fantastic. Okay.
Um, we're definitely going to need some more spaceships, but... Well, where are our spaceships right now? According to Central, we have... Uh, one ship outbound to outpost number one and two. Why does zero say negative 37k? How many ships do we actually have now? Seven? So that's like... Approximately 126, a little bit more than that. Thousand... Four fragments that can be hauled around simultaneously. Um, why are we getting a negative for that? So there should be exactly one ship on the way to outpost number one and two, which is... Zero is purple stuff. Um, this one's number one. So what was that location called again? Stromhurst? Okay, so zero was Corsol, one is Stromhurst. There should be one ship on the way to each orbit. And apparently there is not. Did I miss it? No? Oh wait, one and two. So one on the way to Stromhurst, and one on the way to, I think it was Exorion, that I made I, uh, signal ID to. Yeah, I did. This one counts as being on the way here, and it just left. Um, so that should now be zero. Cool, that seems to be working. I just don't know why we've got a negative 37,000. So it's it's like negative two ships counted that are on their way to pick up the purple core fragments. Um, so something is a bit fucky. Uh, everyone's on their way back except for the Stromhurst orbit one. I don't suppose it's about to arrive. 1 minute 20. When it does arrive, if nothing's changed, um, I could arguably just reset that memory cell and it should be correct. But I don't know what's causing... what's causing us to count negatives. So here we do the positives. Those seem to be working. Um, and then when the ship, uh, gets to its destination, when it leaves with core fragments, we output times negative one. Is it possible that got messed up while I was still patching this and I just forgot about it? Maybe. So it was the signal zero one that was incorrect, right? Yeah. Okay. Now Ion Hauler 3 is almost at Stromhurst orbit. Oh, it actually has to be on its way back for the system to no longer count it as being on its way here. How long does it actually take the bots to do their thing here? We are 30% done. It's pretty decent for our current tech level. Beep, beep, beep. Philip B. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did you do not set an offset? I don't think that would affect the count. Um, and I could check that anyway. But what happens is... This red-green thing here, it detects when the ship is leaving. So we get, with the same circuit logic that gives us tell, gives us a pulse when the ship has arrived. Um, so like we detect S, we output green, we output red 
uh, the red takes two ticks to get here, the green takes one tick to get here. So then, if green is greater than red, uh, it means the ship just arrived. And if red is greater than green, it means the ship just left. So when the ship just left, and only when the ship just left, uh, output the S count from the ship as a negative, um, as signal 1, back to this memory cell here. And now it's correct, now's my chance. Okay. Uh, so everything's been zeroed. If there are no ships on their way to... What was the name of it again? To Corsol. Then all of our counts should be correct now. And... Yes, good. I'm not surprised that's the case because... Uh, we've got a lot of ships. We've got like at least two or three ships waiting to drop off purple core fragments. We're totally saturated on purple core fragments. Alright. Um, so that all seems to be reset properly. Um, I think I will patch this in so that we can now send a request to central. Let me just check the timing here. Uh, greater than 15, less than or equal to 20. Less than 5. Um, where is it? Greater than 5, less than 10, less than or equal to 10. And um, back at Exorion, we made it uh, greater than 10, less than or equal 15. Cool, cool, cool. So that should all be working correctly. Let's just double check back at central. Um, at the moment we're going up to 120 ticks, so that should be more than enough. And... yeah. Um, seems like... One sec. Seems like that should all be working correctly. A few more spaceships would be good, especially since we seem to end up with two or three backed up when we finally catch up with our core fragments of whichever type. Um, but Spiriso, which is planet orbit six, uh, 816, should be sending requests to Central and... Planet Orbit 683 has already been dibsed for the next ship. Okay then. So more spaceships and then we can see if this uh, see if this system is actually working properly with the Foenestra relay, which we have tested thoroughly in uh, a cheat save, but implementing the real thing. Obviously the stakes are a little bit higher. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. So we'll be... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Foenestra. Uh, hold on, let's, let me check. Aegon Orbit. ETA. 37 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We're going to Foenestra, and once we're there, we'll head to Hagen Orbit. And that'll be less than 10 minutes in total. Um, Alright, cool. Uh, I haven't done some of the stuff that I said I would do off stream just because I just finished uh, getting this outpost sorted out. And I definitely wanted to show it on the stream where we start getting the first Foenestra bouncing ships working. Um, but yeah, the stuff I was intending to do, or will do sooner or later, is just like we did with Exorion, 
uh, get rid of all the old stuff and replace it with some nice clean rails and space elevator with a spaceship pickup. Okay. Meanwhile, I guess we could do a little design work. Um, I remember there was something. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed it is. That feels fun right now. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm just gonna, even though we're going to Foenestra at the moment, I don't want to forget. I'll turn this, uh, clamp combinator off before we jump into the editor. And... Whoops. Wait, what? No. No, don't don't get rid of that. Bad. Uh, did I make a blueprint for this? Radiation shielding data and explosion shielding data. I believe I did. Biocombustio mechanical data. No, this looks different. I think I was probably finishing up on this and got distracted by something. Good, my guy, you? It is less than 25 degrees Celsius here as I start my stream. And uh, on that point alone, I am doing just wonderfully. This is... Uh, this is a big relief, to say the least. I actually kind of had to finish my stream earlier yesterday because um, it, it was too hot. I, I couldn't keep focusing. And it was, you know, too hot for too long. All right. Um, so this seems to work. We got scrap. We got explosion shielding. We got radiation shielding. I don't think I've done the LTN requests. Uh, there's gonna be no fluids on this end. That is a good reason to call it early, indeed. Did you go stand in a freezer after the stream? I wish. It was actually, um, like, I live somewhere pretty flat. There's always a breeze, pretty much. Um, for the first time I've ever noticed living here for, like, more than five years. There was just no breeze for, I want to say, at least eight hours that I know of. Um, so, what was it, like 27 degrees? Felt like 37. It was not fun. But this is much, much better. Very, very pleased to have the, the, sh the, the absolute minimum basic level of comfort back. Alright, so these are pickup stations for solids only. And we've named them. And then we need contaminated scrap pickup, which we've already mostly done. Contaminated scrap. Good morning, Toby. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This one will be the same, except instead of contaminated, it is just scrap. Fantastic. Uh, and there's actually no fluids in this whole build, which is a novel change. So we need five things dropped off here. Did I do the math? On um, well, we can definitely fix six train loads worth of stuff and a little bit of change. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six plus ten percent. Let's see, um, six forty uh, is a little bit less than. 110 stacks times 6. What if we go 105? 
seems good. So I'll go a train load plus five percent for each of these items except for uh material testing packs because they have a ridiculously small stack size and relatively high throughput considering their stack size. Oh explosives are really fast too. Hmm, what if I go like 1.5 train loads of each of these? Um, we've got like f a little bit less than a minute to replace our material testing packs. Well, if we only go to replace them when we're down to half a train load, it's actually like 20. 22 seconds. Which I think we can manage, actually. Twisty P. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If you want a freezer, that's here right now. Negative 19, indeed. Um, yeah, if I only have room for 640 stacks here, I'm not entirely sure what I want to request. Explosives are really fast. They're probably still proportionally not as fast as... Um, as material testing packs. That is a little bit less... It's 90% of two stacks per second. And this is also 90% of two stacks per second. They're practically... They're about the same, or they might be exactly the same. Um, blanks at a tenth of a stack per second. Iridium plate is really slow. Heavy goat is even slower. So I think we'll go like... Um, how about 105 stacks times 3? That leaves... Three twenty-five, uh, hundred and sixty-two stacks. So we call our train when we're down to like sixty. So yeah, let's do hundred and sixty stacks for these two, and like a hundred, hundred and five for these three. Um, so sixteen hundred and eight thousand. 1600 and should get those resupplied with a little bit of time to spare and then I'll be a bit lazier with the math and just go 105 stacks for the rest of these so 50 50 and 40 uh, 5,250 and 4,200. Gerda, plate, blank. Gerda. Blank. And plate. And Fantastic. And then, probably going to have similar problems here. We don't need as many different things coming in. So that's just going to be easier. 16 per second. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's slightly slower on the material testing packs. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we can just go 150 stacks of each, keep it simple, all right, testing pack, uh, uranium 235, 
7,500. And then... Iridium plate, blank data card. I probably really don't need to go that fast on the blanks. 4 per second, 4.48 per second. Let's just copy this. 5,250. And... What was the other thing? Iridium plate. 4,200. That's probably fine. We must be at Foenestra by now. Back to Hagen Orbit. I keep wanting to run an experiment to see if... I mean, I'm sure it doesn't, but if we dip into the spatial distortion and then change our destination, I don't suppose we're just going to be there straight away. Check that a little bit later. Alright, back to the editor. Um, and that just leaves the station names, which it looks like I've actually done. Nope, this needs updating. Heavy girder, material testing pack. Those four are correct. We need explosives in there as well. Explosives. And we are making uh, explosive shielding data in a thermodynamics facility. Explosive... Explosion shielding data. Fantastic. That was relatively easy. And this one is just... 1, 2, 3, 4. Making radiation shielding data. So are you looking for a sauna? Uh, no. Oh, not me. I see. Alright, and this goes into a radiation facility, obviously. Obviously. Radiation. And radiation shielding data. We need some iridium plate. We need some... Spicy green rocks, we don't need lubricant, and that's our station name. Alright, I think we're finally done with this build. All the little fiddly bits after we've actually designed it. Scaffolding looks okay. Except for this part. Should be more careful of that. Uh, about this, a little bit easier, perhaps. Why are we missing some solar panels here? I should probably be putting these down as the upgraded solar panels already. There we go. And radiation shielding data plus explosion shielding data, rad explosion shielding data. Fantastic. Did I remove all of the cheat items? I believe I did. Fantastic. Uh, and then we, then we just need the snap to grid. 
of 86.25.1. Fantastic. All right, that goes in the blueprint book. And we've now got all of the data, uh, all of the data cards for Bio 1. So now we just need to copy, paste, edit one of these damn builds to make a uh, Bio 1 and 2 catalog. And then one of these things to make actual bioscience. And that's it. We shall have bioscience. Oh, perfect timing. We are just about to land at Hagen Orbit. Literally in four seconds. And go. Do we have any sh Oh, 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 oh. Did I forget? Did, did I forget? Spiriso. I did not. Signal 3 is our newest base. Fantastic. Um, do we have any ships on the way to that outpost yet? We do not. Oh, what the fuck? Why does it say negative 148,000 worth of spaceship on the way to outpost 0? Answer me that. Answer me that. There wasn't even a ship on the way to that outpost at the time, right? Like, earlier this stream. And I'm pretty sure this is the only place that subtracts signal zero. Pretty sure. Did you set up signal three? Shouldn't that be next to two in central? Uh, I don't think I did set up signal three, actually. Yeah, good point. Um, so let's head over there first. But before I forget... Well, I'll, I'll do this real quick, and then we have to... We have to figure out where the... Negative zero signal is coming from. Because... You know what? Why don't we search for signal? Not that signal. Signal zero. Okay. So it's on the memory cell, and it's on this mem... Hello. What? Why are we... No, that, that should be normal. How did negative zero end up on this memory cell? And signal one and two as well? Let me, let me build this first so I don't have to remember. Okay, so our new outpost at Spiriso orbit is Beryl Core Fragments if it is Planet Orbit 816. If Planet Orbit equals 816, pass everything through, or pass, pass, pass S through rather, and then change S to signal 3. That's step 1. And then planet orbit eight one six uh, pass through everything, and it should actually be barrel core fragments greater than signal three. All right, cool, cool, cool. No. Okay, that should be fine. Now then. 
Now then, if there's signal 0, signal 1, signal 2, etc. on this memory cell, where is it coming from? It gets passed from here. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It doesn't come through on the red wire, I'm pretty sure. Which channel is this? Central Dispatch. And... Central Dispatch... Doesn't receive any kind of... On the red wire, it doesn't receive any kind of number signal. It's only from here. Okay. So if signal zero output everything, it, if this is greater than signal zero output everything, etc., etc. So signal zero is getting passed through here. And, and then it's on this memory cell. And then it gets passed down to dispatch on the green wire. Yes. Oh. Oh no. Are we having uranium problems? Kinda. Kinda. Uh. Unless? Are we having uranium problems? This seems pretty good to me. What do we got? 9.8 thousand? With a provide stack threshold of 50. We've definitely got enough for LTN to come and pick up uranium fuel cells here. And it seems like the train that the vanilla scheduled train that belongs to this station must be in orbit. Oops. Um, holding on to uranium fuel cells, waiting to go drop them off. Yeah, here, here it is. And it wants to go to the drop-off. But it's not doing that because it's full. So that's that's looking excellent, actually. So why aren't... Did I change the request here or something? 3,000. With a request stack threshold of 50. So it can drop down to 2,500. Short trains only. Um, as far as LTN is concerned, this station is short trains only. Do we have no short trains available? Are the short trains busted? No? Short trains are fine. There's plenty of short trains, actually. Green wire to logistic train stop input, reporting 9.8 thousand. 196 stacks of uranium fuel cells. Where's that drop off? I don't understand. Why are we not delivering here? Oh wow, that's a lot of tritium. Why are we not delivering here? Request stack threshold 50. Negative 3,000 uranium fuel cells. 1,900. Gives us 1,100 which is only 22 stacks. Dope. It's fine. Let's just request more and stop being such a dope. Are all the combinators on? Indeed. I do want to confirm uh, that this works. I think we have before, though. 
I'll just check in on it after the alarms have stopped sounding, perhaps. Um, okay, back to the problem of what the hell is going on with the signal 0123. I might, I hate to say it, but I might have to add a combinator here just to remove signal 0, signal 1, etc. Um, so we get some number, I, I don't know why as well we're getting the negatives with signal 0, but it seems to work with the other stations. Maybe the offset that I put in here has something to do with it, but we're not getting errors with signal 1. And I don't know how a positive here would make it go negative. Um, so it gets passed through to this memory cell. And signal zero gets passed through to dispatch. And dispatch... passes everything if it's not going via f no no dispatch passes everything back to central okay yeah that's our weird loop but why is it not causing problems with the other two are station two and three the same item the icon looks the same at dispatch uh Station 2 is Beryl, Station 1 is Erudite, Station 3 is Beryl. Yeah, no, that's correct. So this one is Exorion, uh, and this one's our new outpost. Uh, I hate to add even more combinators, but I think what I'm going to have to do here is just say, like, output everything input... Uh, if each greater than zero, output each, and like, wait, what? Uh, output each input count, and then have a constant combinator to remove the zero, one, two, three, four, etc. signals. Before we put things into the memory cell here, so that the numbers can't go round and round. It's either that, or at each dispatch. I would have to somehow prevent signal zero, etc. going through here. I, I really... Like, I see that problem, but I really don't understand how... We're only seeing this error happen with signal zero. And also, why didn't we see it happen before? It might have something to do with the offset, but I doubt it. We should be seeing a similar problem with signal 1. Well, whatever the case. Uh, one more patch for this mess. So we're just going to do the old each greater than zero output each, and then negative a million for any signal that we do not want to send through. And I'm sure eventually we'll get into the letters as well. Alright, uh, so now I want to remove... Well, frankly, I want to reset all the memory cell stuff. Um, I think it's safe to just empty this memory cell, actually. Because it gets passed on and then forgotten. When does this reset? When the ship lands, uh, launches. There are... there's one ship here at the moment. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, you're not going anywhere right now, are you? So this resets central dispatch memory cell, which we're going to do anyway. It's fine. And then... What are all our spaceships up to? If there's two ships on the way to Outpost 2... Uh, Exorion Orbit, that's Outpost 2, right? It's waiting to dock at Exorion Orbit, which is indeed Outpost 2. Um, this is just waiting to finish filling up. What are our trains doing down here? Oh, is it just that slow? Then why did we send two ships? Bruh. Well, whatever the case. Um, there's two ships on the way to Exorion Orbit. They count as being on the way until they are on the way back. I don't want to mess with that. I don't know the exact number that we've got for signal zero, otherwise I would just pulse in something to get rid of it. Maybe I can. Wait, how many ships? Taken orbit. Taken orbit. Okay, so we know that no ships are actually on the way to post zero. That's the purple stuff. Uh, let's throw down a pulse generator. Um, 592,000. Signal zero. Actually do want it to be positive. Switch that off. And... We're just gonna pulse that in. 640. Cool. That's removed signal zero. So now this thing is correct. Because we've got one ship picking up from Exorian orbit. Uh, one ship on the way to Exorian orbit. Both of those count as outbound to Exorian orbit. Everything else is parked. And that should work correctly. Now before this one wants to launch, um, I hope we've got everything set up. Yeah, it looks like it. 816, that's our new outpost, right? Spiriso Orbit. Planet Orbit 816, that's what's on the memory cell. So that's going to get sent through uh, once. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say once one of our ships is ready to launch. Uh, but it seems like Iridite is backed up as well. Was that a barrel? No? Oh, that was the old old ship that took off just now. Okay, um, can we like pick up some more purple stuff or barrel core fragments somehow? Maybe just increase the amount that these stations ask for? That might not be the worst idea. How much can we fit here? 20 times 320 times 2. 12,800. Um, minus 100 stacks. So 2,000. Let's call it 10,000. That should prevent any overflow. And this is a very temporary solution, but it's going to have our train pick up more core fragments from the drop-off point. 
Um, and that is going to get the ship moving again. And we should see it heading out to the new outpost. Why is there a construction bot floating here? Y minus X, that's logistic bots anyway, that's not going to actually cause a problem. But there are logistic bots floating. Because there's no room, yeah no, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, this is fine. Here comes our train. Bots are moving again. Hopefully that's enough to empty this, I don't think so. Could re-enable this spaghetti again. Not that I want to. Oh, there was more over here as well. Okay, so ship is uh, ready to launch and getting launch orders. Its target is Foenestra. Beautiful. Okay, Ion Hauler number one, appropriately enough. It has in the memory cell destination planet orbit 816. And its current uh, target is Foenestra. It'll get there in about eight minutes. And when that happens, it should just change its destination to the new outpost. What happens after signal 9? Uh, we go into the letters. These are just arbitrary signals that we need to represent each outpost. Alright, so there's two ships on the way to Outpost 2, and two ships on the way to Outpost 3 already. Um, and unfortunately, it's going to get harder to check where they're going at this point, because... Often it's going to say Destination Foenestra. Um, why does it... No, 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 that's one ship each. 18k. Cool, cool, cool. There's about to be two, because one of the parked ships had destination Foenestra. Yep, two ships on the way to outpost signal number three. Fantastic. Alright, we need to saturate our system with more ships. So that it doesn't matter if we have two or three ships waiting to drop off. Um, Immocite cave core fragments. In fact, it's kind of preferable. Do we have enough um, spaceship floor? I believe we do. Fantastic. And since Beryl's going to actually be flowing now... Did I make a train for this? Feral... That's Iridium... Feral Core Fragments, is this it? Uh, yes, I did make a... Make a train to send Feral Core Fragments up and down. Here it comes now. Fantastic. Alright, so, yeah, since we're not going to have trouble, or anywhere near as much trouble, um, getting spaceship floor now, because barrel's going to be flowing about three times faster. I mean, it, we're, we're still going to be behind for a little while, but it'll sort itself out. Uh, I would say it's now time to make proper spaceship gantry. And while we're at it, we should get started on Bioscience 1.
Um, so I want that to start here somewhere. Or, if not there, then like... One, two, three, probably here. Is where we could start Bioscience 1. Let's grab our scaffolding train, head on over, do your thing. Uh, what am I doing? Fantastic. And where do I want the gantry for new spaceships? Probably just like here, honestly. I should probably just like... I did end up deciding I was only going to do one uh, construction ship gantry here because we only want to fill up one at a time because otherwise if anything is scarce the bots will split it 50-50. So I think I'll actually just use this space. Um, where is this going to fit exactly? Right about here. And make sure we leave plenty of room. Let's just place our first... The construction ship basically just needs water, an ion stream, which we've already got here, plus uranium fuel cells, which we've also already got here. Or at least I've brought up a bunch of them manually, I suppose. I can have them delivered already. do that actually. Uranium fuel cells. Oh yeah, because once again I wish without time sharing I could do different settings for different resources. Maybe I should just start using time sharing for these moments. Um, I've already used it once, and it turned out to be kind of easier than expected. It would literally just be, like, one timer. So, like, something like... T less than 120. Output T, input count, and then constantly input 1T. And then we'd say uh, one decider combinator for each set. If we're, if we're just going to do like two different sets of uh, settings that we're feeding LTN, we could have like decider combinator, decider combinator, red wire, red wire, green wire from these two. And then like if T is less than 60, T is greater than or equal to 60. Output everything. And then that goes to the LTM train stop input. So it's actually like, assuming that we only have two sets of different, um, you know, request thresholds and train sizes that we want to allow at one station, depending on what we're asking for. It's actually just like three constants and three decider combinators. Which is more than I'd like, but it's still like pretty neat, I guess. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, uranium fuel cells. I'm just going to be lazy and ask for 6k. Um, so that we don't have to do those shenanigans here. 
I just need more storage space to make up for it. Do I need to move this? Probably. Alright. What? Oh, I see. And go. And do we not have the buffer? I'm pretty sure I automated buffer storehouse. Yeah, we did. Fantastic. Is there anything at all missing? There is not. Uh, we do need to feed it a request for uranium fuel cells automatically to get it started. Um, can I do that? Let's see. So, so I kind of need the uranium fuel cell. How can I like detect when the ship has been built? Can I reliably detect when the ship has been built? I don't think so. I could look for signal S. And we know that the wire can get up here at least. Um, and if we have signal S, and then maybe wait a few seconds, and then pulse in uranium fuel cell, or I could just, you know, grab a stack of uranium fuel cells and just put it in here. That's, that's one possibility. But what would that be in a game about automation? Heresy. So unfortunately I can't query if the ship has actually been built properly. But it's a fairly safe bet, I think. Um, if we check for signal S... If S is greater than 0, output T1... And then if T uh, how do I make it reset when the ship leaves? If R equals Oh, how about is if S is greater than zero? Yeah, also if s is greater than 0, output t, input count. That memory cell, that, that timer slash memory cell should reset the moment the ship leaves. So we got t, 200, and counting, and then nothing. Perfect. All right. And then we'll just say, if t is greater than 600, so 10 seconds, uh, it's a pretty safe bet. No, it's not. The buffer storehouse took a surprisingly long time to arrive. Uh, alright. Let's say, like... One minute. If T is... Ooh. Don't output everything, just output uranium fuel cell. Uh, if T is greater than... No, if T is equal to 36k, we only want to do it once. Output... Uranium fuel cell 47. 
and that's going to be put onto the red, uh, which means... Which means it's going to pulse to this memory cell. So let's try it with our next chip, which I hope we've got enough to make. Alright, which... what number of hauler are we up to? Ion hauler 8. Very nice. I am for eight. I think I'd like to double it. Uh, but yeah, we've got water. We've got ion stream. We've got uranium. We've got heat. I will have to do the heat thing manually. Like, just to input the very first uranium fuel cell. because of the way we're doing um, fuel management. And because of that, I don't actually want to set like an auto launch. We have to do some manual stuff to make a spaceship anyway. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, and then? I kind of want to give it over to dispatch instead of like manually sending it somewhere without the count being set properly. Um, I could always just send it to barrel drop-off as long as this is always empty. Like, whichever resource that we're slow on, I can send a ship to. Or I could make an arbitrary launcher just for the new ships. Um, for that, I would have to like, add another one of these over here. Maybe it would be better than... Maybe it would be better than wasting some ion stream uh, with an extra launch just to... No, but if it's going to auto-launch from here... I, I, yeah, no, I don't want that. This is fine. So, let's see. Uh, plus 13, I believe it is, for the anchor target. So we want to put anchor using, I think it's called target left clamp. Even though the clamp is like, it's facing left, but it's on the right. So you decide which is more intuitive. Anchor to target left clamp. Target, left, clamp, 13. And I can either pass everything through here and hope that these signals don't cause anything weird to happen. Which they shouldn't. But I think I'd rather just play it safe. So we're just going to do everything input count, but it's for... Anchor to target left clamp. So these two get passed through uh, precisely when... Whoops. Precisely when one minute has passed after we first get the S signal. And we can hopefully resume the ship has been built. Okay. That said... I might just manually clamp it into place this time. Launch. And... Anchor. Right about... He here? I hope that's right. It's right. Fantastic. Alright, and it should be, as soon as it refuels Ion Stream a little bit, reporting that it's ready to launch, and then destination Planet Orbit 816 will get sent through... there it is. Sent through to that ship, and off it goes towards Foenestra. Fantastic. Have we had a ship pickup from our new outpost yet? Oh! 
Yes, we have. Kind of good timing. And it is indeed full of barrel core fragments. Uh, and it should show a count of exactly one ship on the way to the outpost designated signal 3. 37k, that's two. Uh, unless it already sent one. Is this it? No, it wouldn't have counted it yet. Uh, unless? No, it's not sending the spaceship launch signal, so it wouldn't have sent this through. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait. I'm confused. Did I not connect this properly? Oh. Oh, Iron Hauler 3, I didn't see you there. Yeah, no, cool. Uh, there are two ships. Or there were two ships. There's two on the way back from our new outpost. After bouncing via Foenestra. And there should be one on the way there now. Um, and count it as such. Perfect. Yes. It's all coming together. Um, and as we will see... Well, I kind of have to, like, stalk them for a little while. Why don't I set a timer or something? Iron Hauler 1. ETA... Pagan Orbit... ETA 57 minutes? Uh, that won't do. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, Anestra, please. Does it have it in the memory cell to go home? It does. Um, what's this thing's target? Pagan orbit. Nope, 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 nope. You are going to Foenestra as well. Are there extra asteroids here? There are. Even though we can't see them on the map yet. So there's an asteroid field here. Uh, so Iron Hauler number one. ETA to phone Astra is... We don't know because we're in the distortion. Um, can I see this one as it gets up to speed? A about six and a half minutes. Probably a little bit less once we reach the interstellar map. Okay. Uh, let me just throw a little timer together. Six minutes, 20 seconds. Okay. Um, so why did the new outpost not send them back via Foenestra. Because I forgot to tell it to send them back via Foenestra. That that's why. No, this is the wrong outpost. This is this is Iridium. Okay. Let's let's not get too hasty here. Uh new outpost barrel. We did set that. So, what's going... Oh, no, I think this is supposed to be empty. This part here. Because the signal order is... Foenestra comes after all of this. So, the stuff that actually gets sent to the spaceship, the spaceship console, needs to be just anomaly signal, and this needs to be on the memory cell. And we'll probably see confirmation of that back at base. Um, so, like, yeah, if we're going to Foenestra, just send the Foenestra signal through for destination, not the Foenestra signal and everything else. Cool, cool, cool. 
I don't see any reason why those other two ships should have a problem coming back because we put the actual destination on their memory cell regardless. Alright, so what's your ETA? We don't know. Timer says about 4 minutes 20. Cool, cool, cool. Let's make another ship, even though I'm sure we don't have enough spaceship floor. We have 39. Uh, that's far less than I was expecting. Let's make sure we get some more a little bit early. There's actually zero here. We're looking for um, aeroframe bulkhead. Do we already have some up here? We've got like two. Okay. So we're going to do this thing again. Which we're not going to have to do nearly as often in the near future. What? Wait, where, where am I going? No, 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 that's right. Uh, wait there until empty cargo, please. And then I have to get rid of it the moment that's done. So we're going to drop off aeroframe scaffolds, we're going to make uh, bulkheads, we're going to take them upstairs, we're going to make spaceship floor, and we're going to hopefully make another spaceship, and we can confirm that this works. Cool, cool, cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like fourteen chests. Filling all this crap up wouldn't even help right now. Okay. I guess I could just make another processing block or two for... No, isn't all this already saturated? It's very saturated. We are swimming in purple stuff. Even though I changed the limiter here to a setting that it shouldn't normally have. Yeah, but... Totally saturated in Immersite. Very nice. Um, I just wish I had more storage space for it. I could make an arbitrary storage space block. Storage block for Immersite. Uh, I could even set it up so that... What should I store it as? If I store it as raw imasite or crushed imasite, we don't waste anything. But it's going to be a lot more stack dense if I store it as like um, immersion plate. But then if we get rid of the excess, we're going to be deleting rare metals, sulfur, a bit of sulfuric acid. Also, also, I don't actually want to treat. the purple stuff from the core fragment processing as excess that we want to delete just to keep like the little bit of uh, regular core fragments and stone and sand coming through because then we would need like n number of spaceships practically infinite spaceships depending on how many different resources we do that with. Um, but I could, like, maybe temporarily do a Immersite core fragment storage here. Oh, that should be our ship. Um, was it hauler number one? It's on its way back to Hagen orbit. Perfect. 
Perfect. Bring me all of that barrel. Make more spaceships. Um, speaking of which... This guy's actually mostly full now. Not for long. Or, I mean, it's not going to get completely full. And that's the last of it. Alright, just go up the space elevator with that, please. And we'll make what use of it we can. How much is there, though? It was 30 plus whatever is in the train. Where is the train? How are you still not up the elevator? No path? What? What? <gasps> what happened to our space elevator cables? Oh crap, oh crap. Um, can I even get down the space elevator? Can I ride it? I can use my personal ship if not. I thought I had cables literally for days. And I had it super prioritized. Uh, but apparently not. I should probably set an alarm for space elevator cables. Yeah, I can't ride it. Alright, we'll have to use our uh, personal spaceship. I mean, I could use a space capsule, but I think... Uh, not a fan of the one-way nature of that. This is not the time robots, but could try. Alright, to Hagen we go. Why... Do you like this? That was a good waste of a little bit of rocket fuel. No, don't anchor to Hagen orbit. Go to Hagen. On a guy. Uh, alright, so I guess we'll put our personal ship. I wonder if that's going to get rid of the, um, like the gravel gear. Good to bear in mind for our naming stuff. We do have bunch of cables here, but not enough to get the spell elevator going again. 762. We've got tons of cables here. Okay, I stand corrected. It's not quite uh, enough to trigger a delivery, but it is a lot of cables. Please pick up the cables. Pretty, please? Oh, it's a little bit less. It's a little bit less than one train load. Um, but yeah, what were we missing? Holmium cable. We've never had trouble with Holmium cable. What's going on here? There's no Holmium. Why is there no Holmium? Evidently, I need to rank the priority on this one. Morbid Dragon, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's see, where we make the Holmium ingots. We've got plenty of ingots. And we've got plenty of plate. What? 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 16k Holmium plate is 160 stacks. Request tech threshold 100. Long trains only. Okay. And right up here we've got uh, like almost 300 stacks of Holmium plate. Constant provides tech threshold 160. Uh... 
Okay, but why have we stopped making holmium here? We haven't. What? What? Did we just get slow on holmium? Maybe? We haven't had trouble with holmium, like, ever, for ages. Okay, I think I know which outpost we want to upgrade next. Because we really, really can't be going without spell evader cables, obviously. Not enough trains? No, that wasn't it. Well, I hope this isn't going to get glitchy or anything, just because the spell evader broke. Ah. So where are you going with this? Up the elevator. That makes sense. Maybe I should hard prioritize... Well, we kind of already do hard prioritize our own space elevator. I, I could put like an extra container here, just to be even safer. Maybe I should. Now we need another one of these here. Make it a big one. Where's our train, by the way? Oh, it's waiting for this train. Okay. Oh, God damn it. No, that's fine. I'm just gonna do a little manual driving here and hope the worst doesn't happen. Okay. So there's our cables. Shouldn't be too long until our space elevator is working again. Oh. No, 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 no. Could, could you just leave now? Go, go to depot. I was trying to go through this train because there's no signals there. Bruh. Could you maybe just go back to the depot for a moment? There we go. Okay. So we'll have cables for days in this container alone. Seems good. Maybe I'll put an alarm here. Once we stabilize, I'll set it so that, like, if there's any significant amount of cables missing from this container, we start getting alarms. Have a block signal block to the space cable delivery train stop. I'm not sure if I follow. Also, why? Oh, I see. Yeah, these probably shouldn't be regular signals. Although, apparently, this train isn't in this sector. The sizing up here is a little bit different, unfortunately. Okay. And there's our Holmium cables that we need for the bloody... 
Yeah, I think I see the problem. I think uh, I've probably got the vanilla scheduled Holmium cable pickup to be unconditional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had... I was able to take Holmium cables for granted for a long time. Um... So having the vanilla Holmium cable pick up, just come and get them before LTN gets access to them didn't seem like a problem. But since we need to prioritize the Spellevator cable, uh, it might actually be a problem. Right. Unfortunately, the LTN stops that double as vanilla pickups uh, don't lend themselves very well to prioritizing LTN. Because the only way we, we can really control the vanilla train schedule is by setting the train limit um, low enough. Like to zero so the train doesn't come. We can easily set it up so that picking it up with LTN is a lower priority because we just set a higher provide stack threshold to make absolutely sure the vanilla train isn't coming to get something first. I haven't found a solution to this other than to have... Where have I done this? Uh... To simply have a second pickup station, one for vanilla, one for LTN. This way we can prioritize LTN, which I did here for the same reason, because the um, uh, because we want to prioritize the space elevator, the cables. Um. Um, I see. Well, I can't write this early in the morning. I'll try again after the coffee. Okay, fair enough. Is there a way? I don't think so. I guess I could get the vanilla train schedule to drop off over here half the time, or even more than half the time. Except then they're just going to oversupply it. And I'd have to maybe set train limits here based on the cables. No, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. All right. Cables are flowing, we can make up to 9.5 per second, although that's not actually happening right now. Oh. What are we doing? 22 and a half divided by 2, right? Yeah. We need 21 aeroframe pull per second. We actually need faster belt for this to work properly. Uh, I do have fancy belt now. Let's get some purple belt. For our spellevator cable, since we're now playing catch up. Let's do an upgrade planner. Um... I think we don't need to do it with the loaders, just everything else. Probably not even the splitters either. No, we probably do need it for the splitters. Alright. Blue belt, blue belt, blue belt becomes purple belt, purple belt, purple belt. I don't think we worry, have to worry about the loader for stuff going back in. Which 
just for the input belts. And the rest should be fine. So what do we need here? Uh, about... Less than one stack of each. Let's go grab that. Shot Shadow Plus. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Kind of jelly that you use LTN for SE. For my run, I never used it. Having all these stations was a nightmare for each individual ingredient. Yeah, I don't know how you'd get by like that, to be honest. Accounting for train capacity and priority. Indeed. Vanilla just doesn't give you the tools that it should, in my opinion. Uh, I don't see belts just randomly, so let's search properly. What? What? Oh no. Why am I making purple belt but not... Why did... We were probably struggling to make them. Oh no. What are we missing here? Heavy bearing? I I wasn't expecting that. We've got some in here. Not a whole lot of iridium. Didn't we have iridium, like, saturated? That we're dropping off from... That's beryl. Oh, that's beryl now. That's good. That's very good. But weren't we saturated with iridium coming from the spaceship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to make a new block to deal with... Now what? What? What is this? What do you mean, destination f Enable train limit zero. If core fragment barrel less than 6k, which it is... Oh no, you're kidding. That's so easy to miss. That is so easy to miss. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It's this one that's wrong. That should be erudite. And that should be erudite. Okay. Okay. So, all this time we haven't been getting erudite. Um, or at least haven't been get. There's tons of erudite here. Um... This is, this side at least is totally saturated with crushed erudite. So we're not processing it fast enough. I think I've only got one block. No, two blocks. Two blocks to make erudite um, ingots. This is a lot of ingots. Okay, this thing's a little slow. Might want to speed that up at this point. Where's the other one? Same problem? Yeah, we're actually... I can't believe this, we're totally saturated on erudite ingots, but we're struggling on iridium plate because I only had the one machine here. Did my calculator though? Iridium ingot 0.125 per second. 0.44 per second. That must just be out of date. Okay then. Um, I should steal some bearings to do the purple stuff. But first, more importantly... Made it upstairs? Wait, what did I make upstairs? Ah, uh, so many little fires to put out. You know what, why don't I swap this out for an advanced assembly machine? Uh, 
advanced assembly machine. Since we've got all this catching up to do. That should be fast enough, I think. That can do 0.9 iridium ingots per second, so twice as fast as these can make them. And I'll do the same thing up here. Muted? I don't think so. I can see the volume slider. Well, not slider, it's a display. Latibo, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, one, two, three, four. Fantastic. I can't believe I've done this though. We've been behind on iridium while having saturated iridium ingots. That's just... That stings a little bit. Um, but yeah, obviously this will be catching up a little bit quicker. Uh, we definitely don't need to set this to 160 stacks. It depends on stack size, but I'm pretty sure 110 is enough to make sure this doesn't cause the train to get confused. We could, of course, run a little experiment to see exactly how long it takes. But I don't really feel it's necessary. Um, and then I needed uh, heavy bearings. I might just steal some to get my purple belt. Wait, was that split, like, exactly? No, we're good. Okay. There we go. Alright. So, purple stuff. We don't need a whole lot of it. I think we might need more than six, though. Into... Oh, yeah. We definitely need more than six. I'm just give it time to catch. Have you already gone through all of those bearings? Seriously? Mm. Let's just replace what we can, starting from the beginning. And maybe that'll be enough. It's really not necessary, but... I would like... This one doesn't have to be purple, what are you doing? I would like more of these machines to be able to be active at the same time. For when we do go a bit faster. But it's obviously not really necessary for now. And you know what? Just. Why not just make it uniform? When we come back here, we'll finish the job. Wait, but this doesn't have to be... We definitely don't need to upgrade the output. There we go. Right. Uh, 
We're still short on aeroframe pole, which is barrel, which we've got more coming in. Um, doesn't look like we're making the same mistake with barrel. We're actually just slow on the inputs, at least for the moment. Can inserters keep up? Yeah. Individually, we're looking at really small numbers for these machines. All right. It seems like we actually might need more trains picking up the barrel, and or we need more blocks processing barrel core fragments. But that might just because be, uh, be because we're playing catch up. I think this is our only barrel core fragment processing area. Let's see, we can do 48 barrel core fragments per second. Our newest outpost at uh, Spiriso. Uh, 20. We had 20 of these drills. Can actually do 38.7 core fragments per second. That's quite good. Exorion is really, really weak. Um, let's see. Core drills. Entity. We've got 13. Uh, okay, that's not as weak as I thought. Apparently this can do 18 per second. What did I say the other one was? 38? Uh, 56 per second. So I think we are bottlenecked on processing the core fragments. Already. How much do we get? 50.7 barrel per second. Uh, this is actually saturated. Oh, there's a train coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, 50.7 barrel per second. Each of these blocks can consume... 38.4 per second, and we've got two, three of them. So that's not the issue. But I think I should actually make another block for processing barrel core fragments. Um, why don't we put it up here, right next to the other barrel? I mean, the train going up and down the space elevator will have to travel further, but I don't think I particularly care. I am rather concerned about the number of cables here. I can go upstairs and get some more if I really have to. Um, so yeah, let's put... Whoops. Let's put a new block up here. Copy the barrel core fragment build. Except for the old power poles. And grab ye old construction train. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of pulverizers. We can do 10 at a time by default. How many do we need? 24. 24, you say? Why don't we drop the casting machines for a moment? Because these get removed one by one. Can inserters keep... Ah, oh, yes. The grim... Grimble about the bearings? Grimble? <laughs> That's... That sounds grim. Grumble, yeah, I figured. <laughs> that is the most angry sound I've heard you make. Oh, no. Uh, all right, that is indeed 24 pulverizers. Let's park over here. 
And the whole build hopefully will get done with no further action. What are we what are we owing? A restart fixed everything? Oh my goodness. Alright. So I don't know if we even need another barrel core fragment train yet, but um suffice to say we were not fully utilizing the processing that we've already got. Um, we can deal with 115.2 barrel per second. Um, and we were bottlenecked on 50.7. Yeah, uh, we're still going to be barrel bottlenecked on barrel, even if we were bringing in 96 core fragments per second, now that we've got two of these, which we won't be. At least not yet. So yeah, that's going to be a lot more barrel coming in. Vin24 months. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, Let me check on my spaceships. That they're not trying to travel the long way to Wexavis or something. Looking good. Anyone over here? Nope. Let's see, according to Central, we have one ship on the way to the new outpost, and two on the way to uh, Exorion. That would be Iron Hauler 1 and 7. Fantastic. And there should be two that say they're on the way to Foenestra right now, I imagine. No? Hold on, what? Are they lost? Outpost 3 is the new one, right? Yeah. Uh, we've got one ship that's supposed to be on its way to Outpost 3 right now. I... don't... See it. Um, M confusion. Oh, did I not update this? No, I did. I made this generic so we don't have to update this part. We did did that over here. So why does it say there's a ship on its way to Sporzo orbit? If there is neither a ship on its way directly to Sporzo orbit or Foenestra. Oh, here we go. Oh, huh, that's the one. Maybe I just missed it. Did it just leave, though? Where are we right now? Hold at 8. Yeah, it just left. Um... It says there's two ships on the way. So... So that means... There's still a phantom ship, supposedly, on its way to Spiriso. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand how these counts are ending up incorrect. Maybe because I had to manually change something earlier? I can't think of anything where that would have been a problem. I am here, indeed. Um, now it thinks there are three ships on the way. 
which is still one more than is accurate. What is the problem? Uh, the problem is with we're, part of the system is we count how much, not how many spaceships, but how much storage worth of spaceship is on its way to each outpost. And yeah, it's off by one. 18 point something thousand is the number of core fragments that theoretically these spaceships can carry, depending on other things that they're carrying. Um, and somehow the count, like if we look through, we've only got one outpost where they go by a Foenestra so far. And if we click through all of our polar ships, we should find exactly three that either say Destination Foenestra or Destination Spiriso Orbit. Uh, unless at the moment it's actually parked at Spiriso Orbit, but I kept checking that already. This looks absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you. Malforged, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. <sighs> yeah, I don't know... So, does it just sometimes fail to... Do we have enough electricity here? I had to add a bunch of accumulators to make sure the spikes from the space elevator don't actually affect any of the combinators or anything. Um, but I don't think that's the problem. It should be reporting negative whatever number three when the ship leaves. Maybe I somehow sent one there without adding... Oh, I think I know the answer. Maybe. No? No, it, sh it still should have... It still should have counted it, right? When I manually put a ship, like here perhaps, it was the barrel one, I think. But then we let the automatic system launch it. And it probably should have had... It should have had the destination signal that it would have converted to signal 3 as a positive. Uh, if that was the part that didn't work, the problem would be that we're one less than it should be, not one more. 55k, that's some... So three ships are supposedly on their way to that outpost. Foenestra without stuff, that's one of them. Foenestra without stuff, that's two of them. And that's it. Hmm. I don't know, man. It's, uh... It's confusing. Also, why do we not have sticks? I already priored this. We're missing a beryllium plate. We're still catching up on beryllium plates since I added this. I need to add beacons. Oh, it's right here. And apparently we don't have beryllium... We don't have beryl here yet. 
Why not? Where's our train? It is currently picking up. I'm about to go back down the elevator. Okie dokie. And then go drop off for fragments. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I see the problem. I should change these limits back down to something sensible. Oh, they're already only at 6k. I think we need another train to do this. Oops, too slow. We probably shouldn't need another train, given enough time. No, screw it. We need another train now, and I'm sure we'll need another train eventually. Let's grab this guy. Trains only. Fantastic. And make one such train right about here. And I'll have to give it some stuff manually. So now we're going to have two trains moving barrel core fragments, if and when we need them. Um, wherefore aren't our advanced additional electric engines and so on? Oh, do I need to go upstairs for more big portable solars? Nope. Uh, maybe? What have I got? Nine. We're one off. Give me one more. Electronic components... That's a lot, actually. How's our space elevator? Oh, we're down to 29 cables. I think I'll bring some back. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And cable drop-off is over here. That's not the cable drop-off. That's not the cable drop-off either. And I'm just going to fill up this stack of big portables. Alright. Back down we go. Don't forget to drop these off. That'll keep it going for... how long, actually? Uh, 3.2146 per minute, but also when the space trains go through it costs a few cables. So, like, two seconds? Strain power packs, and you are good to go. Bring forth more barrels so that the space elevators, uh, space elevator doesn't have to stop. What? 
Why did that train just stop dead? It's probably going to not quite finish loading here. Yep. Alright, that'll keep it going a while. Now then. Now then, now then, now then. I should probably put some... charged power packs in here. Where are the pa charged power packs coming from? Huh. That's weird. Where are these coming from all the time if... If we're not, like, charging them here. Oh, here it is. It's just slow. It's catching up. Okay, then. Surprisingly slow. Alright. So. We should be seeing more... Feral core fragments coming in. There they go. And there they go. And let's just check the count of those ships. Uh, three ships outbound to the distant one, and one outbound to Ixorion. Looks like that one's correct. Destination Spiriso Orbit, that's one. Destination Spiriso Orbit, that's two. And that's it. So it seems to... It seems to be maintaining the correct count, but off by one. What are you doing? You didn't travel via not Foenestra, otherwise you would have taken a lot longer to get here. So why does it say you're in, like, regular space? Interstellar space. That's weird. Whatever the case, um, it does seem to be working. I just don't know how it got off by one spaceship. Honestly, this is happening so often, I'm thinking of just putting in a pulse generator here so that I can remotely correct it. But it seems like once the count is corrected, it seems to hold onto it. I hope. Uh, let me see if I can learn, memorize my new way of doing a pulse generator that I invented. Because I was making a memory cell that remembers the first thing that you tell it and ignores everything else, uh, I had to make a pulse generator um, that didn't care if it was positive or negative, which I'd actually tried to solve earlier, but um, just kind of figured it out this time. So information comes in here, goes onto the memory cell. Oh, that's the reset. Never mind. Information goes in here, goes onto the memory cell. Um, this, this part here is the pulse generator. So they both receive input at the same time on the green wire. And then one tick later, oh, sorry, if red signal equals zero, we output everything. And 
also output red signal just to this guy. So then one tick later we're not going to output anything. Uh, and we also... If anything greater than zero, output red signal. So if we're receiving anything from the memory cell, that's going to receive red signal through this. Um, but basically just these two, I think. Victor, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah. So we just do our input over here on the green wire. And then output from this one. Which is going to use the red wire in this instance. Uh, and I want to grab from one of my spaceships the S number that we're using, 18,520. Um, and then I'm just going to use an arithmetic to change it to whichever signal type. S times 1, or negative 1, output as signal 3, and we're going to pulse it into here. So right now it thinks that one extra... Oh, that should be green. Right now it th thinks that one extra ship is on its way to... The outpost represented by signal 3. And now it should be correct. And I'm going to remove this for next time. Alright, so let's check. One ship on its way to Exorion. It's probably just sitting there waiting for fragments. Fantastic. And one... Uh, it was two, it's now one ship on its way to Spiriso. Should be one just heading back now. Fantastic. And there's probably one waiting for pickup, or not. Uh, one going to Foenestra on its way to Spiriso. Nope, this one's on its way back. Foenestra on its way back. Oh, God damn it. Foenestra and you're full. You're about to come back to Hagen Orbit. I'd love to confirm that. What's the destinate uh, distance? Planet, planet gravity well. Oh, you're still in system. Okay. Two of them on their way back, those don't get counted. So, what the hell? It still thinks there's one ship on its way to that outpost? Even though we just witnessed that it does subtract when the ship's on its way back? Uh, did this not work actually? Did I mess that up? Oh. Oh, yes I did. Yes. Yes I did. That... That's the mistake here. Does a green wire here matter? These are all outputs, so no. That should be fine. So I probably never actually made the adjustment. So currently there's no ships on the way. Right. 
These ones are inbound. These ones are not going to either of those. Okay, cool, cool. So this time, get rid of... That's a positive. We need to go negative. Minus two. What the f... Now what? How do we just get it to negative 370k? What? I am very confused right now. And 400. Alright, that worked. So the only outbound ship is headed for Exorion. Right, this is it. There's no ship actually flying to Exorion right now. Everything else is inbound. That's... whoops. Everything else is inbound. Yes. Fantastic. We got there eventually. Spatial distortion 20... So it's headed for Foenestra right now. It's not doing, like, laps going to Foenestra over and over, is it? No, I think I would have seen a problem with a ship before now, if that was happening. Viking Gamer, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, ouchie. Uh, so you're at 5.8k. The other one is at 4.1. I want to make sure that when this gets to Foenestra, it's changing its destination to Hagen Orbit. Um, it should be, judging by the memory cell. So once that gets to 10k, 6.6. .6. 6.7, 6.8, that's a little slow. This is Ion Hauler 8. Let's check on it in a few minutes. And let's check on our space elevator cables, more importantly. Oh, crap. We're down to like four. Um, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. There we go. Addict needs its fix. We need barrel. Um, are we getting barrel up here yet? Nope. Did I just not... Did I set these to be too greedy? Maybe. How about if barrel less than... Uh, I don't know. 3,000? Then drop off here, otherwise drop off up here. Maybe I need more trains. Surely I don't need more trains to move like... 40 barrel core fragments per second or whatever it was. I think it was 50 something actually. It was a little bit more than this. Yeah, like 50 something barrel core fragments per second. I doubt we need two trains, more than two trains for that. But as it is, it might take a little while to saturate. 
to put stuff into both of those drop-offs. Oh, moment of truth. Uh, target is... Foenestra again. God damn it. Why would this work a few times and then not work? I don't understand. Look again. Pagan Orbit. Okay. I just had to, like, refresh this. Is that it? Oh, thank God for that. It said Hagen? Okay. Okay. Let's look at the other one just to be sure. Destination Foenestra. 9.2k. 9.25. Um, destination, once it reaches 10k, should be Hagen Orbit. And it probably said closest phone Astra, yeah. That was probably where I was looking. Nine point nine, nine point nine five. It does. It it doesn't refresh here. That's why I thought it was phone Astra. But I can see from the information here, one point one K moon orbit. We're headed back for Hagen Orbit. And yeah, if I click on this again, it shows it correctly. Thank goodness. Evil Plur, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Kandar Jr., if I didn't say so. Welcome also. Um, okay. Are we starting to get some barrel fragments up here? Yes. Finally. We don't have that much of a backlog of core fragments that we've actually brought back to work through, but I want to get that initial burst uh, dealt with as soon as possible so that we can get reliable cables. Speaking of reliable... Um, iridium plate... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that helps. That's, uh, that's a little bit of an improvement right there. Why is that train not unloading cables? Uh, because it's picking up cables. It wants to take them up to space. So that we can send cables to outposts. Um, first of all, we've got Ixorion. We've got only 1.4k cables left here, which is a little bit alarming. Um, and our other outposts, Warsaw is down to 1.2k, and Stromhurst 1.2k. And our newest outpost, Wexavis, uh, Spiriso, 2.1. That's not going to run out anytime soon. I think the construction ship has a bunch of them because we typically want to, yeah, we typically want to take a good bunch of cables to get started. So we really, we, we've got everything we need now, but like, we really need to stabilize this uh, pronto. I probably should do the same thing with all of the inputs for the space elevator cables. Don't need to... I don't think I need to worry about it with coal just because it's so plentiful. I've already done it with um, heavy girders. I haven't done it with aeroframe poles and holmium cables where I make an extra pickup station just for the vanilla um, schedule train. That should probably be limited. Time for me to go to bed. Have a good night. Take care, Glacier. Thanks for hanging out. Um, 
Yeah, because as long as there's demand for aeroframe poles upstairs, it'll get super prioritized this way. Only trouble is with chromium cables, I don't really have room. Unless I want to do like another pickup station somewhere. Is the spellvator cables? There we go. Go empty over there. Yeah, I think I will. set up an extra pickup station for these things. We have no trouble with coal because we've got practically infinite oil on this planet and in K2 there's a recipe to turn oil into coal. Alright, I'll do the uh, aeroframe poles first because that'll be easy. We're just going to copy what we did with the girders. Um, but not the state, not the same station name though. This is just going to have a vanilla train stop added to the name. And then we're going to find our train with that schedule uh, and update it. Every frame pole. We'll cargo. Fantastic. Sucks that we have to do physically another station to make this happen. But I really don't see a better way. And how did I do this logic? Oh yeah, that makes sense. Why are you on the ground? Alright. We're only going to push this through if there is enough to fill um, a vanilla train. I should probably make it that plus a little bit. Oops. Uh, an LTN train, rather. So we're going to go for 110 stacks. Arrow frame pull. Greater than... 5,500. Uh, in that case, it can go to be picked up by Vanilla Train. Cool. Now, why aren't we getting any barrels still? Oh, that is so close. That is frustratingly close to a train load. Um, let's just force a delivery here. And were the other ones... Oh, was that it? No? Just coincidentally at the same time? Is this one also priority a thousand? No? Oh, so just sheer coincidence of when it happened. No, this one is priority a thousand. Okay, I'm gonna drop that slightly below priority um, that the space elevator cables has. So this is to support our cargo rockets, which we're trying to phase out. But frustratingly, the cargo rockets are slowing us down 
at phasing them out because they're eating barrel. And we desperately need that barrel to run our space elevator cables, which we need a lot more of with um, the way our outposts work. Okay. Uh, so next I want to do holmium cables. And I might have to look into why we don't have more holmium. I've got a mine right there for holmium. I haven't tapped a finite mine around here for a while. But our one holmium outpost uh, doesn't launch rockets that often because it's we're doing the water recipe for liquid rocket fuel. It's a bit slow. Oh. The core fragments are actually slower than... Wait, are they not moving? No, they're moving. Huh. How many drills do we have on this planet? Two? I think we might need a little bit more than two holmium core fragment drills at this stage. Um, it's carried us a pretty long way, actually. But, um, yeah, we might need more than two. We not, might need more than 13 holm holmonite core fragments per second. Okay. Okay, the short-term solution is uh, build more holmium mines just on our local planet. Let's do that real quick. And like this. I can't believe we've had only two Holmium Core Fragment Miners this entire time. That's wild. I need a drill up here as well. I suppose the... no, not even close. Grab our construction train again. Oh, it's having problems. Needs to empty. There we go. Close enough, I guess. Probably. Actually, no, we're gonna get extra bots. Also, also, we don't need no stinking 24 pulverizers right now. Uh, I could give it a temp stop and have it go immediately once it's loaded, if I had told it before it reached uh, this stop. Otherwise, it's just going to move straight away. Are we good? No, oh, we don't have beacons. Beacons and cliff explosives. Well, it, it actually does need beacons right now. How many beacons are we asking for? There we go. Actually, I think I'll ride this train. Make it a little bit easier. Away we go. How's our power looking? Pretty nice. How's our uranium looking? 
Pretty nice. Fantastic. Uh, that's not fantastic. What happened to our practically infinite uranium-235? And why isn't it putting... 235 in here? Enable, disable, static whitelist, uranium-235 less than... Oh. Oh, I see. Um, well, that's no good. We got Coverex starting from scratch all over again. I never thought I'd see the day. Maybe it's way past time to make a new Coverex build. That might be fun. Oh yeah, we don't need this. Um, I'm not going to do a wide area beacon just for one of these, but a small beacon makes sense. We need some power. And what have we got here? Still plus 100% power consumption. Ouch. That's actually regular power consumption right there. How long would this take though? 23,000. Uh. Probably. It wouldn't take 50 hours. Because there's productivity bonuses. So it would probably take like 33 hours to get rid of this. Okay. Okie dokie. Are there already trains coming here? No. I might just update the station name here. Womanite. Fantastic. That should all be working already. Oh, don't forget the red wires. And... That's not gonna work. Let's just use a one sub. Because we're lazy. Fantastic. 33 hours in K2SE, that's nothing indeed. Cat and True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, back to base we go. Uh, I didn't signal this. I want to say it's probably fine, but it's probably not fine. Just send the construction train back there in a minute. Can you turn around from there? Not really. This'll do. No, 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 no. And then wait for inactivity. Okay, that should get that done with no further action. Uh, how are our ships doing? System says... There's two ships on their way to Stromhurst, I think it is. It's 
Stromhurst is up here. Number one is Stromhurst. Yeah, two ships on their way to Stromhurst directly. Number one, number two. That seems to be correct. The Foe and Astra ones must be on their way back. Fantastic. I think our counting system is working. The rest should say Destination Hagen Orbit. Yeah, I think it is working. Happy day. Happy, happy day. Alright. We actually have enough spaceship floor to make us another ship. I'm shocked that that has happened already. With all the stuff we're running around trying to fix. Beautiful. And let's see if this works. As soon as we detect S, we're going to wait a minute and then... Uh, put something onto the memory cell. So once T equals 3600, it's currently 600, um, this memory cell should get given these two items. And then we can just tell it to launch with destination Hagen orbit, and it'll sort itself out. 30 seconds. Maybe this was a lot more time than necessary. Uh, apparently we don't have heat exchangers, though. Kind of important. Are we ordering those to be made? We are. What goes into a heat exchanger? Copper, iron, and pipe. That's very basic. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since we made any of these. We're waiting on, I guess, Holmium Cape. Why are we trying to make another space elevator right now? Because we don't have one. Huh. We are requesting Holmium Cable, right? Yeah, we are. This is very weird. Maybe I'll have to go sort that out. Oh, is this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely forgot we had a third block to make um, iridium ingots, actually. Let's do the same thing we did over here. And that's going to be way faster than necessary. Oh, construction train is helping. Hence the sound effects. There we go. Okay. We're still saturated on crushed iridite. Oh no. Is this broken because imbalanced? No, it's broken because dirty water out. Because stone output is full? What? No path. Because there's a bit of rail missing. Okay. That makes sense. Gotta be careful with the copy-pastes. Uh, speaking of which... That one actually looks fine. Okay. And stone is gone. And now we can do this again. Apparently I put this here to fix an occasional imbalance, but like... 
Oh, yeah, that should probably work. If everything ends up on this side, it should be okay. Alright. Sticks? No sticks. Feels bad. Barrel? Let's look at the stats instead of just poking around. Um, could you sit still for a sec? Beryllium plate, beryllium ingot. That's what I really want to know. Oh, trending upwards is beryllium plate. And beryllium ingot went from wavy to very steady and a little bit higher. Um, so that's nice. Certainly, we're looking at a much higher consistent rate of production than what we had before. Okay. But more importantly, are we getting those cables? Not really. We desperately need aeroframe poles. Um... How close are we to getting a train load naturally? Relatively. Okay, so this one seems to have plenty of input still. Although it's horribly imbalanced. So pretty soon it's going to slow down to like half speed. But for now at least... 46 ingots per minute? That's kind of fast. Why is this one not working? Because its output is full. Fair enough. Yeah, 46 ingots per minute. We can consume 78. Uh, 460 beryllium plate per second. Oh, sorry, per minute. So a bit more than two stacks per minute. That's kind of slow, actually. We're looking at about ten minutes or so before a train comes to pick this up naturally. More barrel. How's our ship? Still waiting on the heat exchangers because the autocraft is never going to get around to it. Let's just take some heat exchange. I'm actually carrying 18 right now. Up we go. That's enough for another nine ships. And I'd better get a drink. First. Alright, do you have your destination on the memory cell? Not destination, but yes, that's good. Fantastic. Uh, I really don't think we have to wait a whole minute for this. And now we're just going to set your target to Hagen Orbit and launch. And you should pop back in here. That's Iron Hauler 8. Uh, is it waiting for its turn? Yeah, it is. Destination Hagen Orbit. Okay. Uh, so this is Iron Hauler number 9. Beautiful. Oh, destination... It says Hagen. But it says anchor to Hagen orbit. What? Did I misread that? Uh, I must have. There we go. There we go. So let's have a look at our newest outpost and see if stockpile of 
Uh, I'm guessing, judging by this, our ships aren't keeping up with the trains. Maybe. Actually, I think I have to look at the stockpiles of barrel in the actual stations, which are looking pretty empty. Oh, that one's really full. Yeah, we definitely need more ships. Don't you need to start reactor? Uh oh, good point. Is this our new ship? No, that's number eight. Iron hauler nine. There we go. Good call, thank you. And just before it auto launches as well. And I just want to check something. It is taking ammo, but no cables to Stromhurst. Probably because there aren't cables in here, even though there should be. Weren't there cables up here before? Yeah, there's, there's plenty of cables. Uh, what? Short trains are permitted. Provide stack threshold is 120. And then at these stations, we've got request for th uh, request stack threshold five. That's only a hundred, and we're asking for 300 space elevator cables. And we've got the space elevator cables actually. Why were they not put in the ship? Hmm. Did I actually forget the part where we get the ships to carry... No, this one's got space elevator cables. The chest wasn't asking for them. You know, this one's working. It's got the space elevator cables on the memory cell. Hmm. This one's headed for Stromhurst. I could have sworn number nine was headed for Stromhurst. It is. Did We didn't just run out of space elevator cables at that particular launcher, did we? No. And it's not like the space elevator cable request gets updated before the ship actually gets there and drops it off. I have no idea why that last ship um, didn't ask to take space elevator cables. Well, as long as... As long as the ships take them often enough that the space elevator cables don't break, I guess it's fine. That's, um, a little concerning, though. Just a tad. Alright, give me a minute. Okay. Did this not trigger LTN screensaver? Are there just no deliveries up here right now? Okay then.
Here comes more barrel. It's coming through with shocking regularity, actually, already. And I am a fan. Let's look at consumption of barrel core fragments. Oh, yeah. That's pretty promising. Oh, wait, that's production. Consumption... Consumption is also rather promising. Okay, before I forget, we need to do... Pardon me. An ant crawled in my drink and therefore down my throat. I don't know why they're attracted to this one spot where I happen to keep my drinks, but it's not helpful. Did you tell him to give it back? Yes. Jaws Bowser, 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 good to see you again. Um, let's see. Yeah, 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 I was gonna do the, uh, somehow gonna squeeze in the chromium cable equivalent of what we've done with girders and poles to make sure we prioritize LTN over the vanilla pickup. Um, I don't suppose we could just fit it here? Maybe? Yeah, we definitely can. How about you shove off for now? And we'll take this. And remove these. Keep that there, actually. Um, I think we've got plenty of room to just do it like this, this time. Oh. Alright, so we'll make the- but no 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 stop 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 it stop. Uh, we'll make this one a vanilla pickup. And we're going to name this uh, the same thing, but add a vanilla train stop to the end of it. And we're going to change this guy's schedule accordingly. Uh, except, hold on. I'm sorry, that was rude of me. We need to do... A little bit of this. Measure out where these go. I guess it doesn't have to be that far back, does it? Oh no, no, don't, don't, don't delete that. Um, this will probably be the easiest way to do it. Only trouble is, uh, you would then be blocking the LTN train. So I think we'll put the vanilla stop up the top, oddly enough. Or maybe down here? I think that makes more sense. Except I can't put it there because of the, how wide the bulk loaders are. Mike good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Papa Snorks, welcome also. Playtime in this world is yes. Uh, 20 days, 16 hours. It, it's a bit. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think we do need to move this over a bit just so that... Whoops. No, no, no. Oh, God damn it. No, come back. Stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Look, just go to the depot. Be a good train. Uh, I'm going to make this the vanilla stop up here. So that if anything... An LTN train would block the vanilla train. Because we want the LTN to be higher priority in this instance. Which is the only reason that we have to make two... Uh, two stations. Okay, so then we're just going to put our output from here, which is still not moving. No holmium plate. What happened to our holmium? Oh, same problem as before. Alright, let's update this real quick. Nice, big, juicy, advanced assembly machine, if we can fit it, which we definitely can. Not sure why that was so short. Um, and hold me in plate. And then, same thing over here. And here. Whoops. And then we just fly there. Fantastic. Actually, I think the... I think the decon train stole some holmium plate just now. Yeah, it, it, it stole holmium powder. Okay. That seems fine. That seems fine. And... That seems fine. Cool, cool, cool. So now we're gonna get... Uh, 108 holmium plate per minute, assuming that we have the backlog of ingots that we don't actually have. Never mind. Oh, there's some cable. So I think our max rate for this was a bit below three belts. Oh, it's... yeah, it's slightly above two belts. Okay. Um, maybe I should replace it with faster belt. Might be easier. We'll have the output belt. Find its way over here. If it's two belts of input, we only really need one going to the front. And then we can allow short trains or long trains. And then only if that is full. Um, something like this.
if all me um be greater than 110 times 50 5.5k then allow it to flow through to the vanilla train which doesn't need any checks or boundaries because the vanilla train is just going to come here as long as we only have one vanilla train for Holmium Cable we can just have it come here unconditionally does this have those nice warehouses bigger on the inside you can build in? Uh, no. I'm not using Factorissimo this time. Well, I, I've never actually used it. Um, so this saying this time is perhaps a little bit misleading. Um, but more to the point, no, we're not using that this run. All right. I don't think we have any information traveling on old power poles here. So let's go out with the old and in with the not so new. That's going to be a bit neater. Oh, I forgot I dropped myself down to one personal rope port. Nice day one progression. Uh, Hillgrove, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, that seems fine. And the fact that we have Holmium Cable making its way back to Spellevator is fine as well. So what do we have here? Everything except for sticks. Again. Sticks... Even though they're set to priority a thousand, never seem to get built. Wonder if, okay, maybe I've just missed it. Um, arrow frame or... Oh, yeah, it happened in the last 10 minutes. We made 1.3k. Uh, and that's happened twice in the last hour. But 26,000. Oh, that's 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13,000 whenever there's a train delivery up here. And then... I guess that's why I saw that we just made some cable. Space elevator cable. So we just made 2.1 thousand in that little burst. Uh... How much are we consuming over time? Space elevator cable. 18 per minute. Um, so in the last 10 hours, as sporadic as our production of cables has been, uh, it's still almost as fast as we're consuming them now. What's the plan for today-ish? Running around with my hair on fire. Um, fixing all the little problems that threaten to make the base collapse. But, more importantly, well not more importantly, um, the plan was basically to just... Confirm that our outpost system is working, even with the ships bouncing off of Foenestra, which it is. Get more throughput for the core fragments that we're getting through that system. Uh, crank up our production of space elevator cables, for example. You know, everything we need to support more outposts. And make more outposts. So normal day in Factorio, indeed. Just uh, looping around, going more faster. The usage included setting up the new elevators also, big spikes. Yeah, we actually broke our main elevator. You're joking. 
It's happened again. It hasn't stopped working yet. Maybe it gets back to zero before it stops working. So did we actually not lose like 800 cables because we let it get down that low? I really can't wait for it to naturally send beryllium plate to the spell elevator uh, to make aeroframe poles. Actually, it should have happened already. Production. Because I said it was going to be like 10 minutes a while ago. Yeah. We were just looking at it. And is, was that why we got a spike of space elevator cable? Yes, I think it was. It's just not enough. I may need to add more... No, I think I did the math on that already. I don't think... I, I don't think... Even when we've got enough spaceships to keep up... Um... That we need to... Add any more processing to keep up with our Beryllium outposts. It's just that we're playing catch up, and the stack sizes for Beryllium are really, really big. Where's the other one? That's not beryllium. That, that's beryllium ingots. Okay. It's actually just here. Faster. That'll do. Alright, that should keep it going a little while. Like, at least two minutes. At least. Oh yeah, I forgot. We should set this up to have a stack limit of one. And this one, limit it to like, uh, 200 stacks. Since the vanilla train will usually just sit there. This game could be called Fractalio. The whole thing is just fractals, make small chips, make larger pattern construction that kind of act like giant computer chips, and so on. Turtles all the way down, indeed. Oof, da. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we should see train delivering to make more spell elevator cables in just a moment. Let me just calculate. Um, 50 times 100 times what? 5,000 uh, divided by 3 times 1 point. It is for 1, isn't it? Yeah. Times the productivity bonus, which is 1.32. Uh, we only get 11 stacks of Spellevator cable from an, an, an entire train load of aeroframe poles. How do the cables get into the right loader? Into the right loader? What do you mean? The correct loader? The loader on the right? 
I'm not following. Zoom out on your map and it looks like a computer chip. Yeah, lots of Factorio maps look a lot like a computer chip. Far more than this one, actually. When people do main bus builds, uh, like smaller scale vanilla stuff, it looks very much like a computer chip. That cable comment was Holmium cable with the single slot limit. Oh, okay. So because I'm counting on just one vanilla scheduled train to take Holmium cable upstairs, um, I'm not bothering with a train limit on this station. So the train's going to come here, and then it's just going to sit here until it's full. So I don't want, like, a whole cargo wagon extra of Holmium cable sitting in the final bulk rail loader. Oh, I see what you mean. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I think I see what you mean. Oh, no. One station too many there? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Where are we going? There we go. There's nothing actually in here right now. Also, also, this one is not set up properly. So many layers to this game, indeed. Calculation for space cables were ten times too small. Nani? So my calculation was 5,000 aeroframe poles for one train load, right? And then it takes three to make one cable? Where is it? Uh, three aeroframe poles to make one cable, yes. 5,000 over 3. Uh, but then, because of productivity bonuses, we get 32% more. So times 1.32. Oh. We get 220 stacks. Right? No, uh, 110 stacks, because it stacks to 20. Yeah, so we get 1.1 train loads of um, space elevator cable per train load of uh, aeroframe pole, which is our big bottleneck right now. Type 500, not 5,000 when dividing. Fantastic. Well, that's a lot easier to keep up with. And considering uh, the ease that we kept up with space elevator cables before, I'm not terribly surprised. Where, where's my mall? Back here. Did we get the purple? We didn't get heavy girders. Uh, why not? Not no iridium plate. But hasn't Iridium Plate been zooming? Girders are saturated. Girders are totally saturated. That's fantastic. But the Iridium Plate input for the girders is still not saturated. So we're playing catch up. Okay then. Looks like there's about to be a delivery here. Let me try 105. I want to see how much slack we've got. If it allows 90 per second through, does a slack of 5 stacks. Well, by the time the train gets here, it's actually a slack of 9 stacks. Uh, but yes, there's still like 5 or 10 stacks left over. Well, it's harder to test with constant input. 
but yeah, maybe I don't have to be as aggressive. Considering that's only a stack size of 40, I probably don't have to be as aggressive setting the stack size extra high to make that work. Um, but yeah, GERD is a super high priority because GERD is going to space elevator cables, so... We're gonna, gonna keep dumping the iridium plate here until it's super saturated. Which unfortunately means we're not getting heavy bearings right now. Did we get more... Purple belt at all though? I don't think so. Could I go steal some heavy bearings? The train has a few. I could make it drop off at the mall just once. Pricks, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Gotta just delete this as soon as it's done. Fantastic. And now we can make some purple belt. Except it's all gonna get turned into the other purple belt immediately. Oh well. Can we make another spaceship yet? Uh, we're halfway there. Should I force it along? Are we even bottlenecked on spaceships still? Probably. Probably. I don't know if this is enough. Uh, we need so much barrel to get back to where we were. I keep thinking I see motion because the belt is so fast over here. Like, I, th I think that we're making spell elevator cable, but we're not. The thing is, I can't really go off paying attention to other things. Because we desperately need... Our spell elevator cable saturated again. But we can rest easy. Alright, here we are heading back with another load of barrel. Here we are picking up another load of barrel. Could you say that there is barely anything available right now? Oh no. Well, judging by the fact that uh, two seconds after that ship left, we're completely saturated on barrel core fragments, at least at the outpost. Um, and yeah, I think I saw at least one of our stations up here had actually quite a lot. Yeah, we're about to slow down on barrel production. Um, we need more ships, so yes, I will force that as fast as I can. Um... But we need barrel sticks to make aeroframe scaffold, to make aeroframe bulkhead, to make spaceships, because that's needed for spaceship floor. And we need the barrel sticks to ensure we get spell elevator cable, to ensure that the spell elevators don't break. Like, they're still broken now. Why are there four trains? Oh, not this again. Well, that's my fault. I think I just literally just need to put in... Yeah, this is the trouble when you design things when you're so saturated on a resource that you can sort of take it for granted. Uh, you don't account for when you can't take it for granted. There we go. Oh! I think we actually had a lot more spell elevator cables than I thought, because 
This is multiple trainloads of spell evader cables that were just waiting to be dropped off over here. Okay then. And meanwhile the spell evader wasn't working so we weren't getting more barrel. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord. Just because there were two signals missing? We didn't actually stop uh There was a sharp drop off on consumption just in the last six minutes of barrel core fragments. So considering we've got significantly more capacity than we need to keep up with production, uh, that should be fine in a few minutes. It's always signals. It's always one little thing somewhere. Uh, but yeah, we've now got a obscene amount of spare space elevator cables stored here just to be safe and i think i will set up um an alarm system because i want to know the moment this drops down to like 2000 If cable less than 2,000... Perfect. Global playback, show alert. Spell evader cable. Main spell evader. Uh, big, spooky, only 2k cables. Fantastic. All right, I think, I think, I think, I got 110, um, we don't need as much spell evader cable storage here, if we're going to have such copious spell evader storage here. And also, we're able to produce it really, really, really fast compared to the stack size, right? 9.5 per second, that's uh, almost half a stack. And overall consumption of space elevator cables. Oops. Um, uh, consumption. Obviously there was a spike there because we just got this working properly again. But we're looking at... Probably about this. 22, 23 per minute. It'll be a bit higher nowadays, but not that bad. Okay. So I imagine there's a bunch of barrel up here. Oh, huh. that didn't actually cause any problems yet. Okay. More spaceships. I'm gonna go steal some aeroframe poles. Which ultimately becomes spaceship floor. Because I'm pretty sure we're still bottlenecked on spaceships, as opposed to our actual barrel production. It's going rather slowly. Just put this in here. Also, a bunch of these are just waiting to be picked up by the vanilla train, which not my highest priority right now.
Hurry up. Hurry up, auto save. So what do we get? Uh, four airframe pole becomes one scaffold, and they have the same stack size. Prod bonus of 32%, but that's still pretty rough. Still pretty rough. Once these stop, which they're about to, we'll take our train to the usual spot. Close to prod four. Um, I think we need Vitamelange for that or something. We can do tier four modules, but they're a pain. Yeah, we need Vitamelange for prod four. Speed four isn't that much of a nuisance. We need machine learning to. Oh crap! 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 I forgot to tell it to empty. Um, yeah, speed four. We just need machine learning data and iridium plate. Efficiency four is exactly as much of a nuisance. Um, but I'm not that excited. Like, when I can get tier 6, I'll go to the trouble of making the next tier, probably. Okay. So let's see. We have... 246 floor. That's about half of what we need. We need 418. Uh, 172, oops, we need 688 aeroframe bulkheads, 1, 2, 3, I think we're going to get it, yeah, I think we're going to have enough to make another spaceship, fantastic. Maybe I should set this thing to inactivity. Nah. Oh, and then if there was nothing here, it would leave. I, I could actually set conditions that, like, aeroframe bulkhead greater than zero and inactivity, I suppose. Away we go. So basically what I want to do is just keep cranking out uh, spaceships until we are no longer bottlenecked on spaceships. Uh, and then we should have no trouble keeping up... Well, already we should have no trouble keeping up with like space elevator cables and stuff. But we're playing catch-up. Um... But, yeah, once we've got spaceships saturated for our current empire, um, we'll go make some more outposts. For one thing, uh, I'd really like to get Verb T updated. There's not that much to remove either for the old mess. It's going to be a nightmare. You know, I, I, I think this is where I'll make a backup and see if I can get away with removing the uh, the tree mod. Because we've got all these trees that we can't remove with Deconstruction Planner. They sort of function like buildings, only not. Planning out the rail uh, to get a decent number of core fragment, uh, core mining drills, that's going to be a nightmare. As if it's not bad enough that we'll need 600,000 cliff explosives on this planet. Time to nuke that mod? Yeah. Alright, let's summon a train. 
and I'll ride it to the mall, because why not? This time I won't get killed by it. Fantastic. You can just remove them. Made that mistake too, indeed. The mod, I mean, yes. And away we go. Okay. Space ship floor. Go burr. Let's put down our blueprint in unlimited confidence that we're going to have enough in a little while. Zero chance that that math could be wrong. Fantastic. And this will be hauler number 10. We're into the double digits now. And in... 25 seconds, it's going to pull stuff into the memory cell. Do we not have nuclear reactors, really? Uh... Wait, we're trying to make nuclear reactors. Huh. Why were we so far behind on them? Kind of weird. Alright. Is that the only thing that was missing? Yes. Oh. Didn't I bring up a bunch of... Oh, here it is. I was going to say, I brought up heat exchanges. Do I have a request for heat exchanges? No. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. And then we can just... Well, we could probably wait till it gets a bit more water because the heat exchanger was blocking... The lack of a heat exchanger was blocking this from filling up. Turn reactor on, indeed. Fantastic. It really is a shame we don't have a way to directly measure heat. And... We're probably about ready. Destination is Hagen Orbit. Integrity check. Fantastic. And... give it a name. Ion Hauler 10. Whoops. And launch. And it should pop into existence... Uh, over here, actually. Why is this one still here? Seafacad, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. There's no pump. Pump on water. Nope, no pump on water. It just equalizes. Cat train go burr. Fantastic. Is this our new ship? It is not. Our new ship is probably still waiting its turn. No, oh, here it is. No, that's number nine. Ten is up here. Oh, it's already on its way. To Exorian orbit. Even though its reactor hasn't warmed up, it's fine. It'll survive while it warms up. Um, but yeah, that seems to be working just fine. We have 
two ships on their way to our barrel outpost. That would be... this one's coming back. Destination is either going to be Foenestra. That one's coming back. This one. Yeah, this one's outbound. And this one is heading for Spiriso Orbit, so it's almost there. Cool, cool, cool. Counting system seems to be working. Did number 10 load with cables properly? 9 didn't. Uh, do you mean 9 didn't a while ago? Uh, it did load with cables. It was asking for 46, but it only loaded... Oh, 50. Never mind. That's fine. That is fine. We do have a very large buffer for cables at each of our outposts. Very good. Okay. How much more floor do we have? 102. It's gonna need it's gonna take more train trips before we can have more ships. We gotta keep spamming ships until uh until we're not bottlenecking on ships, basically. Or until we simply are getting so much um barrel emesite cave core fragments and iridium that it doesn't matter that we're bottlenecking on the ships because we're just saturated. Either way. Spamming ships until UPS is under 30? Nah. I mean, that's one of the reasons I made this uh, system. We don't need to guess at how many ships we need for each outpost. Just like LTN, we just add more... Um, we just add more trains until we see some idle in the depots. Simple as that. Okay. So what's next? I never did build these. Um, let's grab our uh, scaffolding train. Park it over here. Construction train. Park it over here. And grab our blueprints. Bio 1 data cards, space blocks, indeed. For some reason, it makes more sense in space than on the ground. Does it? Oh, this counts as one big, um... Yeah, until the signals have been placed. One big sector. That's why the construction train is being a little weird. What? Where are you? What? 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 Okay, that was a little strange. Can we place this before the construction train leaves? Or... no. It's a huge human megastructure, indeed. Please place the scaffolding on the left. Yes. 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 Fantastic. And then? Oh. I think this one's ready, but I forgot to... Make sure they had different, or the same uh, types of solar panel. 
I don't think we're even carrying the new solar panels on the construction train yet. Let's just place these for now. And we're going to need thermo facilities, mech facilities, thermo facilities, and radiation. Uh, so that's 12, 12, and then 12 plus 8. 12, 12, and 20. Or I could grab those myself. Twenty of these. Mech facilities. Are those actually in the same... No? What? Is factory search drunk? Uh-oh. Okay, now it's okay. How many mech facilities do, did I need? I think it was 12. And then... Rad facilities. It was also 12, I believe. Is factory search drunk? Yes. The Gozen? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. T Hacks, I asked Chat GPT to explain why eggs are vegetables, but it didn't want to lie. I find the last part a, a, a little bit hard to believe. I wonder if they can change the SE building to only work if there's scaffolding underneath, otherwise you can place it and it's disabled. Oh, I see what you mean. So placement rules would be kind of like uh, pylons, but it wouldn't actually work if it doesn't have floor beneath it. I'm still going to have to bring the construction train back because lots and lots of belt. We've already got trains queuing up. Might actually be a problem. I'm going to need more uh, modules. I still haven't built a system to bring a bunch of different... Oh, crap. Uh, a bunch of different little things up in one train, up and down the space elevator, without wasting lots of trips. Not sure how to go about it, really. It's kind of like a multi-rocket, only... Well, no, it's very much like a multi-rocket. By the way, today is eat ice cream for breakfast day? Is that so, then? Uh, how many... You know what? I'm not even going to count. I'm just going to go get um, some modules. First Saturday of February, indeed. Uh, modules should be up here. We need mostly speed for anything we're building in space. That's a lot, actually. You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to put the difference in, uh, in the mall. And we also need a bunch of efficiencies for... Uh, for the big beacons? Did you find the extra station at Purple Cable Block? Extra station. Did I leave a ghost down there that we didn't need? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can just get the construction... No, decon train. This is precisely a job for decon train. Okay. Up we go... And then... did I just see what I thought I saw? 
Oh, it's flashing because it's not in a robot network. That's fine. What? Oh, right, I remember. These are way faster. So we don't really need a beacon for them. But I didn't want to build just three of them. And be all asymmetrical and stuff. I'm out of beacons. There should be beacons back at the space mall. In vanilla I have a generic supply loader unloader train. You set stuff in a constant combinator and it knows to do things to exact correct numbers. Yeah, I know how to do that. Um, the thing is trying to automate bringing stuff between the two malls in space and not in space um, and deciding when the demand for something is enough that we should bother with a train trip. Well, that's 50 wide area beacons, just like that. Um, let's drop off most of these, probably some of these. And you know what? Uh, I'll borrow this train to get over here faster. Just a little bit quick. In my system, if an item is under 50% of the request, it calls the train. Might not be the worst. Uh, so if any one item drops below X percent. Oh, I should have brought... I should really put some more advanced solar panels in the construction train, perhaps. If not, have a dedicated upgrader train. You know what? I could just put uh, the higher tier flat solar panels in the scaffolding train. And we could have it drive around. Um, but anyway, let's finish these builds. Fantastic. And we already have... We already have everything except for Uranium-235 here, and what's... Oh, we need superior long inserters, long filter inserters, for this build. And that's pretty much it. I still haven't fully automated the superior inserters upstairs. What do they take again? Um, a bunch of advanced stuff. Yeah, we'll wait to our th uh, wait till everything's saturated and we can take the throughput of those things for granted. You need life support. I mean, I guess technically, you want to be a buzzkill. Let's go back to the mall. That's great for on planet, but space trains are costly. A little bit, yeah. I could just make it so that it'll schedule a train the moment we get very low or run out of any given thing that gets swapped between the two malls. Also, I want to go make it go both ways. Uh, okay, what did I come here for? Uh, superior inserters. Give me those. And you know what? Give me another stack of them. Because why not? And I was curious as to why Uranium-235... 
We've got tons of uranium-235 upstairs. Not so much down here anymore. We really need to redesign this. Why is there... That needs to go there first. That's kind of a high priority right now. I put a ghost for a beacon over here, but I didn't actually build it. Because somehow, even though we had chests upon chests upon chests full of uh, uranium B-35, we ended up back at square one. Um, with this system. No, it's worse than that. It's down the... The 235 is down the bottom. Does it cycle back, though? Yeah, it does. No, it cycles back to get consumed by this stuff. As a higher priority than going back to, to the cover X, just because... Just because of the shape of the belts. Um. Herm, I say. How about this? Why are these inserters on both sides? Whatever, it's fine. Am I just going to set this to... Uranium-235 greater than zero. So there has to be some 235 on this corner of the belt before they'll pick up to make some more uranium fuel cells. So basically cover X is a higher priority. Cool, cool, cool. Didn't I have... Yeah, I had a really smart counting system to do cover X here. But I guess I got rid of it when everything was saturated. Okay. Yeah, I got rid of the combinators. I should really redo a cover X build. It'll be something to pass the time while we wait for everything to saturate again. I could also, you know, give it a hand, since we've got so much of this here. Oh, that's... I can't fly. No, stop it. Stop. 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 That'll speed things up just a tad, perhaps? Just, just a wee bit? Anyway, what were we doing in space? This is biocombustion data. And this is biomech, I believe. And then we've got radiation shielding data. Which is where exactly? It's down there. Is radiation shielding data not part of the first? Uh, wait, what? Oh no 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 no. Oh no 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 no. Um, did I? Right-click. 
I did a material... Hmm. This is supposed to be down here somewhere. I messed up. This is material three. Both of these are. I, I put the two of them together in one block, I believe. That overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. I really don't want a material science build up where the bioscience is supposed to be. It's not... It, it's obviously not a perfect, fully laid out plan, but... We've got Astro up here, Energy here, Material here, and Bio here. Um... Uh, it's going to be a little tedious, but I think I will go to the trouble of relocating that. That's unfortunate. But hey, we have uh, the first two bios. Where they are supposed to be. We need biomass for these two, so that's not happening anytime soon. Pick a dolly to the rescue. I don't think pick a dolly is that powerful. At least spicy rocks didn't get delivered. This is true. And I don't understand why. Hundred and fifty stacks. Oh, this is switched off. Did I switch this off myself? We got this stuff delivered. I'm very confused. I think at that point nuclear rocket might be better. Oh no. Just switch it off, I think. Yeah. Or did I, do you mean I just now switched it off? Because I could believe that. Alright. Coverx is actually already going kind of fast. Fantastic. I, I suppose it's still worth giving it a hand. Oh, they're already all active. Except for this guy. These two, right here. There we go. Alright, so hopefully... Tweak after tweak after tweak after tweak. I won't actually need to redesign Coverex this playthrough. Though I could certainly see myself doing it for, shall we say, academic reasons. Um, now what was I taking back up to orbit before I was distracted by this? I think ChatGPT can play words on stream? I'm sure it can. I am... I have no doubts about that whatsoever. Hey, here comes some barrel. We witnessed it. What a beautiful sight. Um, and we should be... Well, how's our spellivator cable? Not that good. No, we know we're okay for Spellivator Cable for a little while. Let's have a look up here. Spellivator Cable. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, we really need to rush more spaceships. So that means spamming more of this out. And that means stealing sticks. Sticks. 
Why don't I just... Oh, this is already set to priority 1000. Huh. Huh. I'm a little surprised by this. Okay, more than a little. That might explain some of why it was taking time to get space elevator cables. Okay. And what's next? What is next? It is a much cooler day, but I am getting rather warm for the moment. Well, I guess I should start on these builds where they were supposed to be. Are these two... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Friction data, ballistic... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This right here is material 3. So... It was radiation shielding and explosion data, right? Yes. Yes, it was. And this should have its own little space. This should go with the material science. And let's put it here. Grab the scaffolding train, park it over here, and I guess this time I will tell the train what to carry. Uh, 12 radiation and 8 thermal should have room for that somewhere. I think we usually put those things over here. Radiation shielding data. Why are we waiting on delivery cannon chests? In hindsight, uh, I wouldn't do four big machines for an autocrafter again. Having eight uh, makes it far more reliable. If you're not going to do your own manual um, prerequisite slash priority system. Um, so like, since we don't have aeroframe bulkheads right now, it's trying to make spaceship floor. That slot is blocking some other recipe that it implicitly has high priority over. Uh, if we just have more machines to do their thing, uh, then even if we're missing resources, we still have... See, even in, even in the worst case here, well, not the worst case, but we don't have the resources to make all of these things, but we've still got at least one uh, spare machine to make something else. Right. Are you loaded? You don't have rad facilities. Why the hell don't you have rad facilities? Oh. You have nine. Oh god damn it. We need these rad facilities. Uh I'll go do that myself. Please park over here. Wait for inactivity. And don't forget the actual blueprint. Good. 
could borrow decon train from ground to decon rebuild. There's a bunch of stuff in the machines already that I have to like move around as well. Alright, let's head over there. Bit of a lurch while we place the train signals. We don't have as many signals as we used to, so it's not as bad now. Actually, let me head up this way first. Turn the request combinators off. I think they're already off. Oh, never mind. It's fine. That's the actual proper place for them. As opposed to up here. Uh... It's probably easier if I let it make a bunch of data cards before I decon this. This one's missing uranium-235 again. Oh no, that's fine. I was going to say I don't know why, but that's not right. Okay. Decon. Decon. Grab all of this, I guess. See how much room we have. None because... Because the stack size of... Testing packs. Fantastic. I'll just leave that for now. Alright, back we go. I checked my moon nearest the anomaly has bite of meteors nearest to the anomaly oh is it nearest to the interstellar map that's unfortunate that is very unfortunate uh so no we do have this constant combinator switched on we're definitely asking for more than a hundred stacks of Uranium-235. Combinator is switched on. This is a negative. And we have far more than enough Uranium-235 here to trigger a delivery. And just for good measure, we could do short trains or long trains here. So, I'm not sure what's happening with that. We have plenty of idle LTN trains. Um... Yeah, why... Why no uranium? I didn't just accidentally give it, like, Recipe Uranium-235 or some crap. This is really weird. Do we have, um... U-235... Anywhere else that's being delivered by train? We do! asking for 15,000. Um, it seems to have about 11. Hmm. Hmm. You calculated for 100 stacks of 50, not 100? Uh, I'm guessing that's a typo, but... Provide stack threshold 120. That just means how much has to be there. We've got 150 stacks of uranium we're asking for, and a request stack threshold of 100. 
ChatGTP has trouble with hidden letters on words on stream. That's not too surprising. Honestly, if it didn't, uh, we'd be nearing the end. The good end or the bad end remains to be seen. Provide stack threshold 120. It is, uh, is the wire, like, weird or something? Somehow? Huh? What? What? Did I just... What? Oh, that's for when it's downstairs. It picks up from that station name. Uranium stack size is 100. God damn it. Well, there's your problem. There is your problem. Uranium stack size is 100. Why do I keep thinking it's 50? I'm pretty sure I've made this exact mistake before. And there it goes. And that's our first radiation shielding data. Some of my programming students have been using ChatGPT to do parts of their project. Seems good. I guess you have to get creative in testing them in ways that are like you're gonna catch them out you know in ways that are similar to real world problems um so cool that's all working fantastic Let's put this here, and this here, and if I've already designed it, um, nope, I have not. I'm too lazy right now, but I need to do a copy-paste edit of this for the tier 3 and 4 uh, catalogs for material science. Um, but we should have everything. Nope, never mind. We don't have pistol mags, that's right. I haven't put pistol mags into the... into the rail network, oddly enough. Uh, where am I gonna do that? Pistol mag. Pistol mag. It's literally just coal and iron. And I'm pretty sure we can't prod module it. Um, but depending on the stack size, maybe it's more efficient to do it on the ground. That's rifle mag. Yep, we can't prod it. Uh, let's see. Stack size 50 plus stack size 100, one each turns into stack size 200. So average stack size between these two is 75, uh, and this is stack size 200. So it is going to be a lot more stack efficient and therefore space elevator cable efficient um, to make the pistol mags on the ground. I'm kind of glad I don't have to make a build for that up in space. Because it's going to be kind of tacky, sort of. Let's go back downstairs. Actually, let's check on our whole... Hey, there are no spaceships here right now. Um, that's probably a good thing. 
Let's see. We've got two ships headed for outpost number one, two ships headed for outpost number two. And the rest are on their way back, apparently. Uh, so one, two, three, four. There should be six with destination Hagen Orbit. Unless they're Foenestra, Hagen Orbit via Foenestra. Like this one. So that is number four. We got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. What? Did I miss it? I probably just didn't keep up. But yeah, they all seem to be moving. They all seem to be working. Every single ship is in motion. We no longer have uh, several of them queued up in one place because we got overfilled on Immersite Cave Core Fragments before we added this little bit of logic to say uh, if there's any Core Fragments left in here, uh, basically don't bother to send a ship to pick up Immersite Cave Core Fragments, no matter which outpost it's headed for. Nice. So maybe, uh, so we just effectively got a bunch more ships, like three or four. Uh, more ships to go back and forth. Very, very cool. That's a lot of barrel. It's not going to fill up that side, is it? It might. Hmm. What? Why? Why is there a fluid tank? On space. Over here. That's, um... That's a head scratcher. Give me that. Is that an item drop? Item drop? What do you mean? Oh, you mean the thing I just saw? Very strange. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alright, I think we're getting to the point where we can start, finally, uh, thinking about making another outpost. I'd like to do it before we run out of um, Pulmonite that we're mining directly. We can uh, upgrade Verb T. And judging by how easy Holmanite has been this playthrough, maybe Verb T is all we'll ever need. The Holmanite. Was it Amazon which prohibited... I don't know. The clap. Fantastic. So how's our barrel starting to look by now? Very, very good. Um... Let's check the production. That's actually exactly the graph I want. Beryllium ingot is 71.6 per minute. It's looking pretty consistent for the most part. Uh, core fragment production is actually dipping which suggests to me we've got a bunch of stations, or like a couple of stations at least, that are actually filling up. So we are bottlenecked on the spaceship still, at least for now. Really in plate, more importantly, I guess. There's a, this is pretty much the same graph. 
beryllium plate or beryllium ingots. I guess I'm not terribly shocked by that. Um, but how much are we looking at? 710 per minute? And I'm sure the demand for it, at least the theoretical maximum, is a lot higher. 3.6 thousand per minute, if this were to go continuously. Which I'm sure it never will. Um, but we really do have a lot of catching up to do. Um, so what's next? I'd really like to clean up those old outposts, but I think... I think it's got to be verb tea, because we are dependent on holmium or holmonite cables, holmium cables, which we need for the spellvader. Let's go for a little ride. Um, do we actually have the spare elevator? We do. Um, we've got cables, we've got flooring. And I think we've got... We might be a bit short on holmium accumulators. Yeah, I think we need more than 200 for this thing. 396. Why are we so short? Probably because I... No? Where do, where do I make the holmium accumulators? I think I make them here, right? Why lamps? Oh. Lamps come after all of these things. And we're stuck on floors. That's why. Just switch that off for now. That would, ha that would be one of many things that I have to put behind a decider combinator. Um, the number of combinators gets out of hand pretty quickly. You start making exceptions. What's my bot doing? What? What are you? Oh. Uh. What? Why aren't the contents of this chest being put into the bulk rail loader? Also. What the. F What what is going on here? I I think Well this one's okay. This one's all messed up. And this one is okay. And I'm gonna guess oh, I can see it actually. Anything that's dropped into that one actually works. So what if I simply put this here? No, now it works. Okay then. Oh, I haven't let this train do its thing for a while. Let's have it pick up the trash. Uh, I was going to ride that back to the station, but it's already gone. Whoops. It'll actually be back here really, really soon. Maybe not as soon as I thought. Did I set this to five seconds? No. 
Destination full? What do you mean? There's stuff in here. What? Oh, if anything is greater than fifth. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that actually makes complete sense. I forgot that I set it that up that way. Uh, so if I put some efficiency modules in, that summons our train. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, and furthermore, cool. Taxi. I said taxi. Where the hell is it? Stuck in traffic. Don't die. Fantastic. And then... Do we have enough floor for more spaceship? Not even close. Do we have... Oh! It's actually looking for beryllium plate, as opposed to... Aeroframe scaffold. That's different. Progress is being made. Very good. I think we're getting there. Little by little. Alright, do we have... Oh right, I was trying to figure out why we didn't have the Holmium accumulators. Uh, how many do we have now? 258, 259, 262. Fantastic. Anything else missing for our next expedition? Uh, you know what? I think, I think I have enough express loaders. We're going to need some more lighted pylons. Unless we just want to leave lighted pylon substations everywhere, which... Not really. Um... I thought it would have spammed out a bunch of lamps by now. It has. It's only got 50, though. I think, because of the way the dependencies work, we should probably churn out significantly more than 50 lamps. To ensure that the, uh... Oh, wow. When did I bump that up so high? 500 lighted pylons? I guess it makes sense for the outposting. Kind of. Uh, sure, whatever. Whatever, we're going to aim for a thousand lamps. And I've ended up with a bunch of material testing packs here. I don't think there's anything to consume them. Until... Yeah, I need to go drop these off into a data card or something. Particle strain? Sure. That's relatively close. Uh, or so I thought. Where do we make particle strain? Wait, haven't we made particle strain yet? Yeah, we have. I didn't tag it. Particle stream, particle stream. At the north of the energy science. Down we go. What was I doing? Dropping off freaking material packs just to get them out of my inventory. Um, what else? So 
some things busted over here. It's not busted, it's just a sad little robot. Wait. If you're carrying something that doesn't belong here, why aren't you... Because it's not actually in the robot network. Okay. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Iridium seems to be saturated, actually. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's Beryl. Holy crap. We're saturated on Beryl. Really? Considering that this one's not active yet... Well, actually, I'm pretty sure three halves can keep up. Uh, the Lemon, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, 72 barrel core fragments per second. We're definitely, definitely not mining that many. So I wouldn't be too worried if these ones aren't active at this point. Um, but yeah, we're actually saturated on barrel. That's kind of cool. Although, did I make two trains to do barrel? Or was it another one? Barrel core fragment. Which core fragment did I make a second train to run? Don't recall. Are there enough trains bringing barrel down? That's what I was wondering. Um, earlier today I made a second train. I thought it was for barrel core fragments. Maybe it was Iridium. I mean, I could check. I'm pretty sure there won't be any others that have two. Let's see. Iridium core fragments. We see nothing. And then upstairs. Don't tell me it just came through this, the space elevator. We see one. I need to check both surfaces is the thing. And... I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know which train I made a second one for. recently seen an example of a person doing online research by reading a few articles on the topic. Didn't even went, go through Wikipedia. Just take what the AI says for granted, yeah. I mean, that's just uh, the same kind of thing that already happens, but extra, right? Kind of like um, people freaking out over deep fakes, but not realizing that you don't even need a good Photoshop or a bad Photoshop, you just need a bad MS Paint and to drop it into the right uh, space online to pass a big lie around. Do we really not have space cargo wagons right now? Space cargo wagon. Nothing. Really? Did I not put these in the the automatic mall? What goes into a space cargo wagon? Um pretty basic stuff really. But also a cargo wagon. Um okay. We have a cargo wagon, right? We do, we do. Uh, can I look for a signal for space cargo wagon? I think it has to be active. So if it's here and it's switched off, we're not going to find it. It'll only get amplified. We already have that problem. Yep. Yes, indeed. 
How was I... Oh, I was probably making them upstairs. And just bringing them down. Heat shielding... I don't know why I wouldn't have made them here as well. Space cargo wagon and space fluid wagon. That should kick in in about 10 seconds. Upstairs in orbit, indeed. Wait, did I put that in the wrong place? The signals that we're not using anymore? No, they're all connected on the green wire as well. I should just get rid of this red wire. It's confusing. It was back when we were using the priority system. Um, why? Why is it not trying to make space cargo wagon? I can see it on the signals. It should also be trying to make some kind of ammo. Yeah, this one right here should have... a space cargo wagon. Oh, I remember, I remember. I think... I think I recall. There was a reason for this. Um, we need, like, the signal would be, for example, recipe space cargo wagon. Um, for some reason, just putting the regular signal type wasn't good enough, so that's why I ended up doing it like this. Okay. Why don't I just, at least for the moment, put this down here. And set up like so. Just limit that to a few stacks. Seems good. But more importantly, I want the cargo wagon, please. We literally just need one. Oh my god, that's slow. <laughs> no, please. I beg you. That is so slow. There we go. All better now. Okay, we got there eventually. I should have just gone to orbit anyway, because I need the solar panels and... and additional electric engines. Noxyway Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. First answer is install the game. <laughs> Got him. Petri Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Um, and I need some of these. And you know what? I'd like to take some spares. So we've got enough for next time. Love a trip upstairs? Okay. I should really pay more attention to uh, the hints as to where the space elevator is when I'm flying around like that. Alright, almost forgotten what we were doing. Let's make another train to move. I believe it was barrel core fragments. 
just to ensure that that's not our bottleneck. I mean, that's always the reason that we do anything in this game, but, you know. Up the elevator we go. Can you translate the circuit types to if and or? If and or. Oh, as in something that makes more sense for someone who's used to programming at a higher level of ab abstraction? Um, I mean, you can. It's really more of a process of learning to think in a different way, dealing with these combinators. There's our barrel. Fantastic. We have a bunch of ships waiting to drop off barrel now. Is that how it's going to be? We're going to change from one... one resource to the other that we oversupply? No. There's only one ship. There's, a, there's only one ship queued up to drop off barrel core fragments. That's actually really good. Nice. How about Iridium? Oh, we got some... We did indeed get some heavy bearings. Nice. Didn't mention the tastiness of spaghetti even once. But is not aware. Is it a prereq that it understands the memes? Is that is that the true sign of sentience? Memeing. Uh oh. Nope, we're good. How's the cable count? Oh, that's good. That's what I want to see. Nice. Don't let your memes be memes. Speak only in memes challenge? It would be a sign that it can understand more abstract stuff. <laughs> I wonder if it would be a bad sign if it chose memeing as the first way of expressing that. Okay, I probably don't need to see two more laps of the train delivering barrel. Uh, we can probably count on that. Probably. Do we actually need more processing for barrel? Oh, wow. We've got four of these working now. I think that's temporary, but it might take a while. So, at least temporarily, we have 101 barrel per second. Um, we've got three blocks to process it. And that consumes... Uh, 115. Okay, cool. We're not going to bottleneck. That is fine. So what should I do next? Uh, I think at this point I'm kind of procrastinating going to Verti. Oh yeah, yeah, I had to keep waiting on... Uh, accumulators, actually. We've got 328, and we're looking for nearly 400. Um, and that's bottlenecked on Holmium Cable. And Holmium is what we're going to fix. We should just go build what we can at that outpost. Because the only thing the accumulators do um, at those outposts is cope with the spikes from the space elevator. To make sure that the very precise timing that is often required 
or can be required by our uh, combinator system. I meant to drop these off downstairs, whoops. Uh, it doesn't have a very serious hiccup at exactly the moment that we need to send a pulse. Um, but yeah, let's go to VebT. Uh, I'm pretty sure, actually, that I'm going to need to land there. Because, well, for one thing, I always want to put the space elevator at zero, zero, if I can help it. We're definitely going to need to move this. We're going to need some clip explosives. That's... Specifies invalid surface. I can't backspace it. EPS equals zero zero capital V. Yep, that's it. Okay, so spell evader goes here, I think. Can I move this down one? Not even close. Um, I guess I could mark it for deconstruction. It's literally just mining some coal that we're not even using. Um, alright. Is that zero zero? Looks like it. Um, two more. So that goes there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's centered. Cool, cool, cool. And we had the cliff explosive, Sandy. Nice. So I'm not going to have to get my personal ship involved. Verb T orbit, here we come. And where's zero zero here? There it is. I th thought we would be able to see space elevator plenty thingy. Um, up here. Now I'm going to have to try and place it all over again, I guess. Unless... Yeah, no, that's not working. O Ovase, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, well, let's just try... placing this as best we can. I wish we could see the... the ping through the space elevator. Okay, let's say we put it there. Now we can see it. And I'm pretty sure that's right. Fantastic. Maybe it has to be built first? Well, if I put this ghost here, down on the planet, we should see... Nope, never mind. Under what circumstances do we see that yellow outline thing? I wonder. Alright, um, we could let the bots do this, but with... When it comes to flaws, they're incredibly slow and inefficient. So let's just do it... 
this way. Oops. Well, how much wider can I go with this? If I place it at my feet. Pretty wide. Yeah. I didn't realize it could be this easy. Even wider? Oh, wow. Okay. I, I can actually just drag that out to max size. Except, of course, I need to walk over here. But yeah, if I put myself in the middle... I can do that much more quickly. Sorry, I do not speak English. That's fine. Yes, you do. And I'm certainly not going to punch down on someone who's doing their best. More scaffolding. And then over here. I should probably make more room in my inventory. Let's put the modules and stuff in there for the moment. Why am I still carrying radiation facilities? Okay. More scuff. Oh, that was very fast. No! Alright, should be nothing missing on that side. And then... Very carefully... should have enough scaffolding, unless it was never... No, we, we haven't had trouble making scaffolding for ages. Or ever, really, in this playthrough. And yet, I seem to be out of scaffolding. Or is that scaffolding there? It is, it's like 4.4k. Alright, cool. I think that's supposed to be a full chest, but I left some crap in there before. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. That's still got some scaffolding in there, I think. How's your stream today? Tell me we have just enough scaffolding. Forty left. That was kind of close. Tile ghosts. Yep, we got it. Fantastic. Playing Factorio, beautiful. And time to grab the white stuff. Just because it looks nice. Um, I probably should not let my bots do all the work. They're not good at mass placement Howdy, how goes this ship you got there? My construction ship? Very well actually um, This is the fastest one of these I've made Like normally I was satisfied with like just a couple of iron engines 
Um, but I'm very glad I went for a faster one this time. You know what, let's just let the boss do the rest. Even though it's going to be a little slow. Or rather, they're going to waste a bunch of energy. So where is this in the galaxy? Uh, it's pretty much right next door to my home system. Or well, this is my home system, rather. Uh, but this is my main base at Hagen. Uh, and we are currently setting up... Well, we've already got an outpost at Verbti. But it is based on nasty old cargo rockets. Uh, which are very much bottlenecked on liquid rocket fuel, which is super slow. Because it's based on water separation. Um, it just takes a lot of machines and a lot of space to make uh, liquid rocket fuel this way. It is very, very resource efficient. Um, to make the liquid rocket fuel like that, but yeah. We've outgrown that being able to keep up with our Holmanite needs. And we have a uh, like universal dispatch system to send spaceships to outposts like this. So we are adding VerbT, our Holmium planet, to the network. Artsman, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's put all this random crap um, probably in here, to be honest, because I'm pretty sure the rest of that chest is normally empty. There's a mod for ships logistic like LTN or something? Nope, I built it. And it was quite the task. I should probably start on the solar panels and stuff now. We've placed all the floor, right? Let's see. This one. There we go. In fact, I might put some construction bots in here. And... Make things a little bit easier on myself. Oh, look at him go. Wrote a LTN for spaceships with combinators. Pretty much. The game that I know of. Mijagus. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And we'll have some temporary robopots over here. I'm imagining the mess of combinators necessary to make it. Would you like a walkthrough? I want to just get it to the point where the bots are going to do a bunch of work here first. Alright, that's probably it. And one more robopot, because I think they're just in my inventory. Um, and these will have the wrong channel settings, so we don't have to worry about them accidentally recording. Okay, so where should I start to explain this whole thing? Because it's sort of circular, it sort of refers to itself. Let's start with an outpost. Here is tiny little Exorion, um, but all of the outposts look the same. What the? Why is it missing one flat solar? It's missing two flat solar panels. Rude. Well, anyway. Um, so trains bring up uh, cargo... I almost said cargo rocket sections. Uh, core fragments from the planet. We are, once we're finished updating these outposts, we're not going to have anything else on the surface. Just rail 
uh, coal mining drills and like three long trains should be far more than we need. Um, long trains because they're just a tiny bit more efficient um, bringing stuff up and uh, going up and down the space elevator. We've done the math. It's really, really small, the difference of, like, space elevator cable efficiency between, like, two cargo wagons or four. But it is still, you know, an improvement. Um, so it's good to have a train stop that the train can always go to coming out of the space elevator. Um, that's... So we've made this our little depot here. Uh, we're just taking out the discharged power packs and putting in charged ones, of course. Then we've got a couple of drop-off stations. Um, if they're almost empty, trains will drop off here and here, respectively, because we want uh, both sides to be saturated before the ship comes. Uh, the reason for that is we've actually got two separate robot networks here. Not just because we're exploiting the fact that you can have up to 50 logistic bots with no chance of them crashing in each robot network, but also we've got some very deliberate placement um, with the logistic networks touching each side of the spaceships. Um, and we've avoided putting... Uh, putting the chests on the spaceships in the middle. Uh, basically, we don't want bots, like, picking up from here and flying all the way down here to fill up a, um, a chest. The Logi bots are exponentially faster the shorter the distance that they need to cover. Um, and I do mean exponentially. So that's why we have two different Logibot networks there. We do have a little system for resupplying the one on the left as well. Um, but yeah, basically ship arrives. We immediately set request uh, using the green wire here on all of the buffer chests on the ship to fill up with barrel core fragments. We also send um, the go home address, whether it's to go via Foenestra or go straight to Moon Orbit 1180. Uh, Drobek, thank you for the follow. Oh, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. We also detect that the ship has just arrived on this green wire. Um, if S is greater than zero, output one green. If S is greater than zero, output one red. Uh, and then we delay the red signal for one tick by just running it through this thing. So on this red wire over here, if the ship has just arrived, we're getting green signal but not red signal. And if the ship has just left, we're getting red signal but not green signal. Uh, so then we can use that here. So first of all, ship has just arrived, we reset the memory cell that's on the ship. Um, and then one tick later we give it uh, an adjustment to anchor to target left clamp. So it's going to change which landing spot it has when it goes back home. Uh, and then also, just in case it's going via Foenestra, uh, we're going to give it the address to go home down here as well. Um, when the ship does leave, we're going to send a negative number. So S on the ships, I've got a constant combinator that describes how many core fragments the ships can carry. So we can use different, different sized ships with the same system. Uh, instead of counting the number of ships that we're sending to a specific outpost, we're counting how much storage space worth of ship is on the way there. Uh, we don't consider the ship to no longer be on the way here until it leaves from the pickup. Partly because that's just easier. 
Uh, so when the ship, uh, when the ship takes off on its way back, uh, this is one of the few places where we need an arbitrary signal. Um, so for each different outpost, we've got a different arbitrary signal. This one is signal two. Um, we're just going to send a negative of how much storage space the ship has. Um, and that just goes on to the green wire on central dispatch channel. Uh, that just feeds into a memory cell. Well, it's got a few conditions. Uh, let's see. If it's a negative, it just goes straight through. If it's a positive, which we'll get to later, um, it checks which outpost uh, we're talking about, and then it converts S to whichever signal type. Um, so this just remembers the 18k plus change is one ship. So there's one ship headed to signal 1 outpost, there's one ship headed to signal 3 outpost, and there's two ships currently headed to signal 0 outpost, uh, the first one that we made with this system. Um, Mr. Nibbles, thank you for the follow. Uh, what else to describe from the outpost itself? Uh, quite a lot, actually. Uh, this is a display system, it's not really necessary. Um, what's this for? Oh yeah, if we have almost a stack of destroyed space train power packs, we're going to send them back home. Red wire goes to... Hmm. Huh. That's weird. I haven't run into this yet. I think it's gonna, like, put a very large number because it's sending this into the memory cell. Because we're not pulsing it, are we? I don't think it's actually going to cause any problems. Destroyed space drain power packs come out 1% of the time when we go to recharge a uh, discharged space drain power pack. Um, so we're going to gain those very slowly. And once we've got almost a stack, uh, the next ship that comes is going to take them all back, basically. Uh, but yeah, that red wire, I guess, is going to put this signal onto the memory cell, which is also attached to a single buffer chest for set requests. So it's going to take all of the space train power pack, the destroyed ones, home. Uh, let's see. On the green wire, we also take the S signal. S times one output S is basically just so that we have like a one-way bit of wire here. Um, we also say... Four fragments times negative one from from the red wire. This is all of the core fragments that are in these chests, or these chests, I should say. The reason that we read those is so that we can look at the robot network and then subtract those and infer how many core fragments are on the spaceship. Because if we're using set requests, we can't read from that chest with the circuit network directly. Um, so then we say, if core fragments, as in reading from the robot network, positive core fragments minus the core fragments that are in here. So if the core fragments in the ship are greater than S, the amount the ship can carry, but we've got a little offset here, um, so it's actually like minus 500, that's a bit much. Oh yeah, we always end up adjusting this. Because when we tested it, we were using super fast bots. Uh, but yeah, when the ship is almost full, uh, send the launch signal. 
Uh, and then we've got a little timer, I think. Uh, after five seconds, we'll launch the ship. Uh, this is... I've actually forgotten. Four fragments times a hundred. Oh, that was just for the display, I think. And then core fragments divided by S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here we've got a display for uh, how full this is of core fragments and also how full the ship is. That part's fairly basic and not necessary. I'll admit you lost me very early. Do you have a blueprint? Uh, e yes. Uh, I want to error check it a bit more. I mean, I could just publish this as is, I guess. If I update my K2SE book, which someone actually asked for today, or was it yesterday? Um, you can grab that version of it if you want to. I'll probably do that. Um, so then we've got S times 1, just a one-way wire over here so that we can send that back. Over here we have a... Um, basically a time-shared signal channel. So, back at base... Yay, indeed. Uh, back at base, on the channel that we call Central Clock, we've got a timer. Um, it's just gonna reset every two seconds, or however long we need it to. Uh, you can ignore this, this was a little test slash tweak thing that's like temporary. Um, but yeah, basically we've got a central clock. Um, but there's one other thing we use that channel for. But anyway, as far as you're concerned right now... Um... Oh, actually this is one of the things I want to update on this blueprint. Let's look at one of the other outposts. Um, so in central clock, we get a signal for barrel core fragments if the drop-off for barrel core fragments is rather full. Uh, if we don't get that signal, we pass through the time signal. If the time signal is greater than some number and less than some number, then it's our turn. If it's our turn, uh, we can send through... Basically, all of this information, plus how many core fragments we have. So we've got the address of this outpost, uh, which is Moon Orbit 1001. Uh, we've got the number of space elevator cables that is our target. A nice big buffer so we don't run out. We've got the same thing, but for media defense ammo. and space train power packs, and a few logistic bots just in case they somehow get kidnapped, even though we've eventually done a pretty good job of making a system that doesn't kidnap bots. Uh, I actually sort of found a sneaky way to check if the spaceship is here without adding combinators, like, pretty late into building all of this. Uh, and it was basically if green wire, if this green wire has barrel core fragments, we know the ship is here. Um, so if barrel core fragment greater than zero, output one red signal, that goes to here. If red signal equals zero, output everything. So we're basically saying we only transmit um, what we've got and what we're asking for while we don't have a ship here. Uh, and we're only doing it when it's our turn on the transmitter. Like the shared signal. Because if we didn't use a shared signal, uh, the number of arbitrary signals that we'd need would go up a lot more than one or two for each outpost. Because um, we've got all these like 
moon orbit, planet orbit signals, etc. That if you add them together, uh, they just turn into a junk signal. Um, here we are sending through negative one of everything we've actually got in this outpost. So like 1.4 thousand space elevator cables, 5.9k uh, ammo, etc. Positive signal for what we want, negative signal for what we want to have, uh, for what we already do have rather. Put those together and you get how much more stuff we should be bringing. Um, and we just pass through anything positive over here. Dexy, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this system time division multiplexing? Uh, I don't necessarily understand the computer science term, but maybe yes. Maybe not. Uh, basically, I'm just having outposts take turns with... They use a central clock uh, to know when it's their turn to send signals on a central channel. Um, I think I've almost explained everything. The outposts. Don't overfill this. Otherwise the bots will get upset. Uh, we've got a resupply Logibots just in case thing that makes sure that they have exactly 50 Logibots. We've got a system to... Because we have to bring things things in buffer chests, the only chests that we can use to take from buffer chests are requesters. So basically, while the ship is here, we're going to set requests uh, Logibots and Ammo. Uh, and then the insert is going to be disabled. And when the ship leaves, we're no longer setting requests here. The inserters are active, so we move all of this stuff into the passive providers. Uh, and that way we don't get these going round in circles. Uh, normally we don't have all this mess. Normally we do have a static request for space elevated cables that we report back what we've got. Um, I think that's about it for the outposts. Probably. I think, I think that might be everything, except I didn't go into detail explaining how this one works, but it's not, neither necessary nor co terribly complicated. It's basic math um, to check how much we've got versus maximum. Um, so back at our main hub. Potatoes were ugly. Indeed. Uh, so central dispatch, the way... Uh, the signal transmitters and receivers work is you've actually got like two channels using the red and green wires. This is different from regular combinators. Um, so this is where we receive like all that information about what station has what and is asking for what. That's on the red wire. Um, we also send the R for reset signal for this memory cell here. Uh, and on the green wire, we've got the adjustment to this memory cell for how many ships are going where. Um, this right here is a memory cell which remembers the first thing that you tell it, and then doesn't listen to anything else until it's been cleared. So basically, um, we input something to these two combinators at the same time. Uh, if red equals zero, output everything. That goes to this memory cell. Uh, and if anything greater than zero, output red. So the red signal goes from here to here. So for just one tick, this is going to output everything. Uh, from then on, it'll be receiving the red signal and therefore not outputting. So that's kind of like our pulse generator. Uh, and this is just a regular memory cell. 
with r for reset equals zero being our condition that the information goes round and round in circles. Combinators take one tick to receive an input, think about it, and then do an output. Uh, wires in Factorio transmit instantaneously. So a memory cell is basically just a really small circle. Um, but anyway, we hold on to the information, just the first thing that we've heard from any of those outposts. So currently the outpost with planet orbit 816 uh, is what we're holding on to here. We know it's got 80,000 core fragments. It's asking for 108 spell evader cables. Um, the anomaly signal is yes, as in the spaceships should go via the anomaly. And the time signal is unimportant this thing. Uh, here we've got a, a channel for which ships are ready to launch, um, and basically that just picks one with the anything signal and passes it through. Depending on which of these are ready, so the drop-offs are also the dispatch. Um, let's say the barrel core fragment drop-off has a ship that's completely ready to go we would receive a barrel signal here plus all of this um so on the green wire we follow it to here um if barrel signal equals one output everything uh then we've got minus one barrel just to get rid of that and then if barrel equals zero output everything because if we send the barrel signal through, it causes problems. So that's going to go to the dispatch channel specifically for uh, this drop-off slash launcher. Uh, dispatch is going to receive the stuff that we had on the memory cell um, at like the central brain. It's going to hold onto it. Uh, and long story short when the ship actually launches it's going to send the reset signal to clear uh to clear what's in the memory cell here so then whoever happens to be next to say i need a spaceship uh is going to be on that memory cell again and then we've got a whole mess of stuff to do here um we need to check if the ship is refueled if it has water um if the bots have stopped moving, and if there are no core fragments left in the ship. Um, requester chests don't count when it comes to reading logistic network contents from Roboport. So we can just say if core fragment barrel equals zero. Um, if that's true, one green signal. If bots have stopped moving, one green signal. If Antimatter stream is full, one green signal. Uh, if ion stream is full, one green signal. If water is sufficiently full, one green signal. I can't remember how I did it, but... Even though there's two signals for the ion ships and one signal for... Antimatter stream. Uh, I had a way to make it work both ways. What was it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this will save you a combinator occasionally. Um, if you output, output on both the green wire and the red wire, uh, it implicitly multiplies by two. So this basically outputs two green. Um, what else? There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, we're doing the exact same thing as we did at the outpost to check if... The ship has just arrived. When the ship does arrive, we reset its memory cell. Um, and then right after that, we add uranium fuel cells to the memory cell, but only if the ship uh, uses nuclear fuel. So if we detect water, we know that's true. Um, we also... 
when the ship is leaving, send off a reset to this memory cell. Uh, from the memory cell here, if we detect anomaly, we send anomaly. There's a lot going on here. Green wire goes straight to the spaceship console. Oh, hello. Uh, if we do not detect anomaly, then we pass through everything except for these signals. That's just uh, each greater than zero output each input count and a bunch of negative a million signals attached to it. Um, so depending on if we're going to the anomaly or not, we pass through a bunch of signals to the spaceship console directly. Um, if this is receiving any signal from either of those two, then we start the spaceship launch. Uh, countdown, assuming that green signal equals 4, so it's actually ready. Um, and then we wait 5 seconds. Uh, once we have started that countdown, we send through the S signal here through a... Uh, what's it called? Pulse generator, so we get just one tick. And then we send S... Uh, we send everything from the memory cell through to central dispatch again on the green signal. Uh, we also send the reset signal on the red signal. So where was it? Green signal, central dispatch. That goes up here. And the reason we do that is so that we can say, oh, a ship just got sent to that outpost. Uh, keep track of it. Like, add something to this memory cell so we know how many ships are going where. Honestly, I've just about lost track of how much of this I've explained, but that's the general gist of it anyway. It's a lot of stuff that turns back in on itself. There's a lot of circular stuff going on here. It got kind of complicated eventually. But that's it. It works. That's basically LTN spaceships. Using combinators. And honestly, I'm kind of exhausted from describing it. Why do we not have... I, I should probably hurry up and build these. You're joking. We don't have all the media defenses we're supposed to? Well, that's probably fine. We're updating an outpost. It should already have its own media defenses. Um, yeah, here they are. I'm sure those will hold out for a while. I don't really want to start the space elevator cable consumption until... Until I know this is good and saturated, it's getting there. It is getting there. I might... You know what? There's no kill like overkill when it comes to... Making sure we've got a nice long backlog of our space elevators working. I think I will allow that to accumulate indefinitely. Um, so yeah, I might just turn this the wrong way for the moment. Shove some Logibots into this system. And... Whoops. Whoops, whoops. And furthermore, whoops. And I think all that's left to do here, apart from copious signal setting... Let's do that for the moment, because I'm kind of dreading going down and biting the trees. So, let's see. It's going to be Holmanite Core Fragments, right? 
Thanks a lot for describing that, very interesting. And I think you actually finished it if the last combinator with the yellow asterisks is just forward everything to the ship. Uh, let's see. This thing? Uh, everything that's positive, yeah. This goes to... the red wire goes to the memory cell that's on the ship. And that comes... F this right here is a pulse generator. And this is going to take from whatever's on this memory cell. It's a bit spaghetti in the end, but like... This is actually the product of me working pretty hard to keep the combinator count down, believe it or not. Nice, thanks again, you're welcome. Okay, so first of all, we need to set the filters um, to Holmanite core fragments. Oops, here it is. We need to set... we need to change a uh, Cryonite core fragment to Holmanite core fragment wherever we see it. I chose Cryonite core fragments as the template because we live on a cryonite planet and we're probably never going to bother with an outpost uh, for cryonite. So everywhere we see cryonite core fragment change to holmanite. This part's generic, we don't need to change that. We don't need to change this. Um, Set request needs to be Holmanite core fragment. Uh, I can never remember. I think it's only this one. This is our... The address of our outpost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What address is it? Moon orbit 1176. Moon orbit, one one seven six. Let's double check. Moon orbit one one seven six. Fantastic. Uh, and we're not using the anomaly, so leave that off. And then over here we need, I think it's eleven eighty, moon orbit for our home base. Yes. Um, it's a little bit unnecessary, but we don't really need the moon orbit uh, on the memory cell, but I'd like to just leave it there if we're not going by a Foenestra. Cool. Uh, if it's going to be Holmanite core fragments, what's our target left clamp number going to be? Let's see. 15. Which means we need plus 14 on the memory cell. So if this equals 14, output it all. We have 1 here and 13 here. Fantastic. Um, so that's all of that done, I think. Now we just need to not miss Ormanite core fragments. That could be negative 100. Ormanite core fragments. This is all generic, or rather, doesn't need to be changed. Uh, what number are we up to for our outposts? I need to add some combinators over here. We'll get the construction train to drive by. Um, what number were we up to? Four, I think. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah. 
So signal four is the arbitrary signal that we're going to need to represent this outpost. It's so close, I almost think we don't need to count the ships that we're sending here, but no, we kind of do. Uh, this will be set to central dispatch, this will be set to central clock. I don't want to actually do that until we're sure we've updated everything. Core fragment hormonite. And we need to update this part. It needs to be one more decider combinator. We're not just going to check for a range or to see if it's our turn to report. Walk of shame time. I think I've got some fuel over here. Uh, yes, yes I do. Okay. Uh, so basically, the side of Combinator goes here, and we're just going to say if Holmanite Core Fragment detected on this channel, don't send anything through, otherwise send it all. Uh, and then what range are we up to? Uh, last time we did greater than 15, less than or equal to 20, so we're going to do greater than 20, less than or equal to 25. I'm pretty sure 5 ticks is like 2 ticks more than we need, but it's fine. Maybe 4 ticks more than we need to be honest, but I'd rather not be that risky. Mr. Nafka, thank you very much for the seven months. Much appreciated. And a welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, so I've set that up correctly, I think. Greater than 20, less than or equal to 25. Last outpost we made was... Greater than 15, less than or equal to 20. Fantastic. I might just disable this, so this outpost isn't going to report until I put that back. Central dispatch, central clock, um, oh, and this is an update to this whole thing. We don't need to check the time, we can just send this whenever on the green wire. Um, I think that might be it. I think we're good to go. Actually, it shouldn't matter if we send information early, because... Let's see if it's going to send. Yep. Uh, because back at base, the first thing we check is if anything is greater than 9,000. We'll send the rest of the signals through. Well, all of the signals through. So basically that means core fragments. Here I'm assuming that we're not going to end up with a planet orbit or moon orbit number that's greater than 9,000. Um, so yeah, we're not even going to look at it if we don't have 9,000 uh, Holmium Core Fragments. And then I need to come back with... Well, no I don't. I can get them from downstairs. 8, 9, 10. I have to put the space elevator cables in first. I'm sure we'll be able to keep up with... Another 3.2 per minute, that's actually a bit more than I was expecting. I forgot how big this planet is. Why did you choose to do all the core fragment processing on one planet instead of doing it in outposts? Because I can greatly, and I do mean greatly, simplify 
and standardize my outposts this way. This is the whole outpost on Corsol. It's just a bunch of rail and core mining drills. It's very, very neat. It's very, very easy to deal with. I don't end up with miles and miles of obsolete stuff that I wish I could remove. I do have some space rail ghosts over here, unfortunately. But purple core fragments are so fast that I'm really not concerned about that. We'll fix it eventually. Um, but yeah, all the outposts are totally standardized. Very, very neat. Very, very handy. Um, also, you'd be surprised at the effective density of bringing core fragments back. Especially because they're at the very start of a long chain of production with productivity modules. And the many different types of things that come out of them, including fluids, it adds up. All the power on the outposts is through the two fields of solar panels. Yeah, um, even even pretty close to the edge of the solar system. Um, I haven't checked thoroughly, but this is probably more solar than we need, uh, even on the outskirts of a system. Uh, the, the Holmium accumulators are only, and I do mean only, because the space elevator spikes like crazy. Um, when trains go through it, and I don't want, especially with this precious timing, um, I, I don't want the combinators to have hiccups with this system. Um, but yeah, once that is full, we can go downstairs and just steal the media defense installations from there. Oh, I forgot. I was setting up I was putting a uh, superior inserters here, which is super unnecessary. And the only reason I was doing that is so that there'd be like one fewer stack of different things that the construction ship needs to carry. But it honestly makes a lot more sense to just use like fast or even yellow inserters. Um, are we good? We are good. Oh yeah, uh, we're obviously sending the electricity down. This is way more power than we need uh, to run quite a lot of coal mining drills. W enough to well and truly go into diminishing returns. Um, it's more than necessary. Uh, let's check, actually. We've got... I haven't even finished placing... No, we've got everything but the accumulators. Uh, we've got... 1.6 gigawatts. And it's 25 megawatts per core mining drill. Um, so, like, 64 drills. Or a little bit less, obviously. It's enough. Let's grab our media defenses. And of course the construction is going to steal them. I should have just done that a little bit at a time. I'm going to, I'm looking forward to I've already done it on one outpost almost completely, but I'm looking forward to dismantling all of this crap. Like, this is the most neat and small outpost that I was able to make at the time. Um, and it's still going to be a lot of work to dismantle them. Um, unfortunate that we couldn't make space elevators that early. Well, actually, even if we could, until we have spaceships, the whole plan doesn't exactly come together. Just nuke it? Oh no. 
Um, I should probably check on my ingots and stuff. Yeah, iridium, holmium, beryl. Uh, and I'm not worried about the mundane ingots at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, looking pretty good, actually. Holmium's been up and down. I'm not shocked by that. But actually pretty consistent. Cool, cool, cool. Once I see space elevator cables completely saturate here, I'll know that we're doing very well. Sounds like an effective solution. Can you load them into the weapons delivery cannons? Uh, not weapons delivery cannons, but delivery cannons. Yeah, you can load... Well, let me check. Uh, I believe you can load core fragments, but they only stack to 20 these days, so... You really want to be using a cargo rocket or spaceship um, for that. I meant the nukes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Alright, I think I will take a little break before my brain completely shuts down. Um... I haven't checked for any fires to put out for a little while. It could be that something's gone horribly wrong and it needs attention. Um, but I'll do a save now, just in any case. We'll throw up some words on stream, I think. And I'll get a bit of food and caffeine. Uh, Midden, good to see you again, by the way. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did I save? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saved. Let's go LPN screensaver on our homeworld. Or our chosen homeworld. Whatever. Nice fast trains. Words on stream has been kind of slow. Words on stream might just not work today. If it doesn't load in two seconds. Oh, but Veldak is cheering. Okay. You're in luck, Veldak. It is just barely loading. I think. Oh, here we go. I can finally set this up. Alright. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
That's a lot of words. Alright, where are we? We are here. Um, it's probably about time for me to go downstairs and start making the new rail system. Right? We're only missing Holmium accumulators. Uh, I should probably get rid of the temp robo quartz. And personally replace those missing solar panels. By personally, I mean my robot slaves will do it. Alright, let's get rid of the words on stream. Nicely done. Continue? Nah. There is a exponential curve for how how many people do or don't continue watching after one or two or three words on stream. Hashtag robbed? I see how it is. Um... So that's it, right? I'm just... Oh, no, no. I wanted to make sure the bot system was... There we go. There we go. All of these are separate. Um, you can probably have some construction bots. That's fine. Robots in here. And... Did I not bring another 50... No, they should be up here in the construction ship. We've specifically... Uh, set up this ship to build these outposts. Alright, logy bots go in there. What's that emote? Oh, the lurk. Is it lurk? Peak. Fair enough. Um, yeah, let's get some rail. And a bunch more bulk rail loaders. I also need some regular lighted pylons. Fantastic. And that's probably everything we need for the moment. Oh, did I put ammo up here? No. No, I did not. Give me all the ammo. I could take some from downstairs, but it's going to cause cargo rocket to bring more sooner. Actually, I should probably hurry up and stop requesting anything from the old outpost from the cargo rocket. There we go. Alright, let's just see what we can build now. Uh, suddenly I'm realizing how much landfill I'll need. Especially if I want to do the usual layout. Um, for the trains coming up. This is not your first SE run, is it? It is not. Indeed. So, I don't strictly have to do the exact same train layout to start with. Let's do it down this way. This is not your last SE run, is it? I would love an excuse to do more SE runs, honestly. <laughs> I can't think of uh, a spin on it, though, at this point. Oh, I need some regular train stops. I mean, I don't need them, but if the train is not using LTN, I prefer to 
use the regular train stops. Point seven will be out in maybe five to ten months. Indeed. Um, so we could go here. And here. Um, and I'm just going to put three of these stops in serial. Because we don't really need a split thingy for this. Keep it simple. Oh, I think it was the Iridium one that I ended up deciding I liked the best. Okay. Wait. Don't go up there. Alright, so we should be able to fit long train after long train after long train. Uh, and all of these stations are called stacker. Immediately after that, we can go get core fragments from here. Um... Looks like this would be the simplest layout. Uh, I'm gonna need to go back and get all these blue belts. Don't know why I have so much space belt in my inventory. Actually I do, but more to the point I should have done something about it. Corner goes here. And then we'll go straight back this way. Oops. To get back into the spell evader. And this is the part where those trees start getting annoying. Uh, actually... I don't think we will have that bit of straight rain. Yeah, I can't, like... I can't even plan over these trees. Very annoying. Alright. Um, we're definitely gonna have corner to the right here as well. And if you're wondering how to do rails that can go both directions, start paying attention. Because this is actually a really good bunch of examples. I need more uh, bulk rail loaders, I need blue belt. Well, I'll go get that in a bit. Okay, so trains are allowed to go north to south here, but not south to north. Trains are allowed to go both ways, both down this way and back this way. Trains are allowed to go left here, but not to the right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if you had a larger intersection that needs more throughput, you could break this down into more sectors. But it's basically just look at what the signals are showing you and think carefully about which direction the trains are allowed to go and why.
So we're going to have trains also go down this way to get to that core mining drill. Maybe even this one. That's going to allow bi-directional from here. And then we go straight down. See how far we get before we run into something. Pretty far, actually. That was easy. We're almost there, kind of. There's going to be a bunch of little bits of water and these nasty trees in the way. This might actually be... Oh, I was going to say this will be a job for Rocket Launcher, but I actually have a Impulse Rifle, which is sort of better. Sort of a lot better, actually. I'm a VOD watcher and notice something nearly all your... Catalog builds are missing underground builds? Catalog builds. On the right side through the beacon. Because you copy pasted it faulty. Is that so? Catalog build missing underground belt on the right side. Underground. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember fixing exactly this problem on another build. It's fine. I mean, it slows the whole thing down by 50%, and it's a very slow lock. But what's, what's a few many hours uh, between friends? GG indeed. Eldek, thank you very much for the gifted sub. And for the 58 in total, thank you so much. Uh, Falzu, hope you, hope you like. And thanks again for the tip. Well, this is actually making the trees a lot less of a pain to deal with. I'll just remove this one. Whoops. Whoops. Clicking is hard. And... Uh, since the throughput for any individual station is low, the more core fragment drills you have, we can just put a... It's going to be left side, right? Uh, we can just put a left side pickup straight here, I think. Let's do some landfill. I'm gonna have to go back for some more, I think. Very, very clearly. Let's get the blue belt and stuff at the same time. Been thinking lately of getting some banana bread. Gotta love banana bread. Very, very nice. Oh yeah, we're getting power sent down now. Well, this whole thing runs on solar... And also... What is it called? Biomethanol. Which is totally renewable. So we're not stressing too much on that. What was I coming back here for? Blue belt. I need some splitters. Uh, also, bulk rail loaders. I don't need this many construction bots in my inventory. And that'll probably do for now. Big brain, indeed. I was thinking about the same thing, was evaluating possibility that maybe they will not discover any more bugs as they stopped being VOD watched. What? Alright, let's go. 
Sadly, I'll likely stay a VOD watcher because of time. I will endeavor not to miss any more YouTube uploads. It's a lot easier now that the, um, now that I've got a much bigger buffer. It would be even, oh, I forgot to get the landfill. It would be even better if I could fully automate uh, uploading the VODs to YouTube without certain settings being wrong. That'd be nice. Okay, what was I coming for? Landfill. Should only need a few hundred. Actually, it's really, really easy to underestimate how much landfill we need. But that said, it's a short trip to get back. Well, hope you enjoy the VODs regardless. Um, alright, landfill... This wide. And over here as well. Grab our blueprint. And... Delete that because bulk rail loader is a bit weird when it comes to copying and pasting and putting stuff over the loaders that are already there. And that's up there. Fantastic. While we're at it, let's go build that one. I've been thinking again of trying to make some... Uh, like scripted stuff, deliberate stuff on the YouTubes. It is a lot of work. Oh, I need the gun. It's also very easy to be very dissatisfied with every take as you try to record something. Where are we going? Should I even go for this many Holmanite? Yes, I should. Yes. We'll probably go for about this many core mining drills. Give or take. We're looking for like a fairly optimal balance between... Like we're going into diminishing returns but not too far into diminishing returns. Partly because it's not worth the electric... it's no longer a consideration actually, but it's not worth the electricity. Because we get it all from the space elevator. Um, and it's only 25 uh, megawatt per drill now. But the amount of... Sp because of how drills are now, we can't just build them anywhere. The amount of space that we need um, to cover... To get exponentially less additional core fragments per second. Uh... It's not great for the save file size or the UPS. To a lesser extent, the UPS. A much lesser extent. Should be possible to automate fairly easily. Google has good APIs. I haven't programmed much in a very long time, and I generally find... Honestly... Like, a lot of the challenge in doing anything that you'd think would be simple is just, like, setting up the environment and stuff. Like, stuff that you'd think would be so straightforward can literally sink hours. Desperately googling around with tears running down your face. Uh, I think I would like to have... left side front again, but like this, probably, or maybe like this, about here, I think. I hate that part of setting up the environment just to start doing something, yeah. And it seems to, it, it generally seems to be uh, the part that has the least help.
Okay. So that way. And maybe that way. We're not going further than this one, are we? Not in this direction. Unless we're going for that one. I doubt it. We will branch off to go here and here and here. Um, but yeah. Maybe don't need... Whoops. I was going to say maybe don't need all of that landfill. It's fine. Um, I'm guessing I need some landfill up here. And... A little bit over here. And that might actually be all of it. Nope. What? Oh, this is in the way as well. What is in the way still? Huh? Shallow water? You what? What? Are you having a fucking... No. What shallow what? Really? Really, really? <laughs> okay, I see how it is. Okay. We got there eventually. Got... There, eventually. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, rail down this way. Copy, paste, scroll back with shift and mouse wheel. Very handy. Didn't see the water for all those wet shoes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, and then we don't need any signals here, um, I guess I could put signals here, but like, it's really not necessary. We're gonna have three long trains, a bunch of these stations, and the more of these stations that we have, the slower the individual stations fill up. So having like one or two or three or four or maybe even five stations that are all just on one straight uh, with no signaling, in this case, not actually a problem. Um, this is by far the worst planet though, I have to say, for, you know, for clearing the path for the rail. It's actually pretty monstrous. Alright, once again we'll do left side, uh, like this I think, there's actually nothing in the way, nope, 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 do not block the one thing that we came for. Where's my copy paste? There we go. And at this rate, I guess we will actually run out of landfill. Why does... No. Oh, there's probably... Shift R. There's probably some water in the way or something. It's not just the cliffs. Yeah, 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 yeah. You what? You, you have enough... I swear to god, if that water there is blocking this rail... It was? That's a... That's a bit rude, isn't it? Okay. Hmm. 
Am I out of rail? No, the bots are crying. Um, I could do more RoboPort, but then I would have to give up jetpack speed. Okay, robots off. Railgun or mini railgun on. Fantastic. I'm so glad I equipped this gun. Pew, pew. There's actually some cliffies. Do I have any cliffies? I don't think so. Let's go back and get some, I guess. You could also just use grenades. Kind of expensive. And obviously it's not expensive to mass-produce grenades at this point, but like, in terms of the number of stacks I have to carry around, there's no, like, grenade-only place to store grenades that I'm carrying, like ammo, right? Um, what was I coming back for? Cliff explosives. There we go. Ooh. We only have 57. That's actually... That might actually require another trip. Use a tank? Maybe not the worst idea. We do have a tank back at home. I was rather disappointed in its combat performance, but maybe we could just run it into the trees. Maybe. Should have picked up more landfill. I'm pretty sure I don't actually have that much more back at the uh, ship, actually. Boom, boom, etc., etc. That's gonna be a fun one. Oh, I definitely don't have enough landfill for that. But I definitely want it as well because of the limited... You know, getting the most core fragments out of the minimum amount of space, basically. There was a bit of broken rail on the way. I wouldn't be surprised. Doesn't look like it. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Drop. Fantastic. Let's make sure everything's still working. Ingots, especially these three. Uh, Holmium has been like this for a while, that's fine. Looking pretty good, actually. Some elevator cables are accumulating. Very good. I don't suppose we have any spaceship floor. Probably not. Not even close. It's actually just waiting on... I forgot about this. It's actually just waiting on barrel plate. Um, but that in and of itself is taking some time to catch up. Alright, I think we'll go exactly the opposite direction here. Can I do that? Yeah, I should be able to. Uh, 
I asked ChatGPT to write a fictional story about Tyrannosaurus Rex playing computer game where he explores the space. I'm very excited to hear it. Uh, how much... How much landfill did I bring? It's it's a very short trip back, but still. 600... Oh. Yeah, 600 more. That's not as bad as I thought. I'm still positive we're gonna need another trip. Before we're done here. I don't want to have to make another outpost for Holmium, if possible. Meow? Meow come in. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. on the railroad. And... Explosion. Thank goodness for this gun. I thought clearing these trees would be a nightmare. We go a bit faster when we can. I posted AI response to Discord. It's quite a few paragraphs, but T Hex is called the savior of the stars. <laughs> Saved oppressed, indi oppressed indigenous alien creatures. Nice. Settled on a planet where he plays Factorio. To these days. Or to this day, is it? Did the AI say to these days? Alright, so we're going to want front right for this one. I think. Let's put it here. Oppressor of the worlds? No oppressor. What is the reasoning for having non-destructible bio? Uh, it's because I have a mod that lets me place um, trees, basically. What was I missing? Blue belt. Yeah, it's a bug associated with that mod, unfortunately. I was going to make some pretty... Uh... Let's see if I can find them. I was going to make some relatively pretty blocks with trees planted in all of this, like, sand spots that you can see. Uh, but there's two problems with that. Uh, one is the pollution is going to kill them unless you make an awful lot of pollution scrubbers. Uh, and the other is this bug that we've got, where we've got these trees that are kind of like buildings but not. Alright, give me all the blue belt. Actually, let me just make sure that's all the blue belt. Hold on. I may have missed something there. One, two, three, and four. Control click. There we go. Rackenzie, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oops.
Where am I going? There we go. Wait. I already had all the blue belt? For this one at least? Whoops. Need to fertilize the ground first if the problem was that they don't grow from the sapling. Indeed. Knoised, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we're definitely going for those drills, obviously. Might end up going for that one. And like these two. How many drills am I going for? I want like 16-ish. Just because the diminishing returns get to be a bit much after that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight, nine, ten. Did I count this one? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, that's about right. So let's start heading towards some other drills. Do I want to keep going this way to get to these two? No, I think I'll probably have a separate piece of rail that goes like this way, maybe. It doesn't have to be all um, north, south, east, west. I find the diminishing returns after three a bit much. I wouldn't go that far. Especially when the drills only cost 25 megawatt. Are you confident that one line rail won't make a throughput nightmare? Yes, I am. We've got some, uh, we've got some other outposts as examples. Probably, well, Corsol probably has the highest throughput because it's really, really easy to have lots of purple core fragments. So we've just got three long trains like this. Um, let's look at how fast this is. Bear in mind that. This is probably as fast as any outpost is going to be, or one drill per second. Uh, the per second per drill. Um, so 2.3 core fragments per second, times 20, times 50, times 4. Um, 20 times 50 times 4 is 4,000. Uh, 4,000 over 2.3073 is 1733 seconds or 28.9 minutes uh, for this to require one pickup. So I'm not overly concerned that like three or four or five stations, but well, also the fact that if they branch off like this, we're doing a separate. Um, separate little rail sector anyway but even when we do have them just in a line like this uh considering that it takes like half an hour for each of these to individually fill a train load um i'm really not that worried The diminishing returns are rough, but the more you have, the more you benefit from mining productivity. This is true, though it takes a long time to pay off. Yeah, and uh, and the nature of the diminishing returns for the uh, for the coal mining drills means that the bigger your network is, the less you have to worry about train traffic. Paradoxically, it's kind of neat, really. Let's just get those. I don't really want to carry all that coal somewhere. I could almost see myself just shooting it, to be honest. Back at the uh, back in the earlier days of the playthrough, when coal was precious, that would have seemed like the worst possible sin. Did I just do a corner here? Let me just copy this small corner. 
I'm pretty sure... Yeah, the cargo wagons will be straight in any case. Um, and then we need another corner like this. And up only, north only. Does this actually f Oh, just barely. Just barely fits our train. With no more shenanigans. And nice and close but natural like to this uh, coal mining drill. Couldn't have planned it better. Fantastic. Um, I kind of... Oh. I was going to say I kind of need to remove the entire old rail system. But I don't. To make this work. I mean, I will remove all of that old crap eventually, but no real stress for now. Uh, it's not going to place it at, like, max distance with these. That's annoying. Put this one over here. Perfect. And that one will be a pylon substation. Should probably go ahead and grab the drills as well. Ah. Uh... We're two tiles off powering that. I could move it. Would that be a sin? To make a little exception to our build? Just so that we don't need one more power pull? I hope you'll forgive me. Death to the fake trees. I'm sure the Lorax would approve. It's fine. Oh, this goes further than I thought. Whips cracking in the distance? Whips cracking. What? Uh, Tolgahan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, for the sin. Yes. And if that is... Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, this can't be happening. No. 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 It's one off. Why hast thou forsaken me? That's unfortunate. Oh, I completely forgot about this mess. That was actually kind of a pain to drag out way back when. Space exploration playthroughs take so long that, like... You have almost nostalgic memories of earlier parts of the playthrough. You could al almost get that phenomena where... You hear music that you haven't heard in a long time, and it sparks... 
memories and emotions that you'd long forgotten. It's saying the total is proportional to core miners to the power of 3 over 2? Uh, yeah, no, the core miner formula is this. The first drill... Well, the first drill is worth as much of the, as the first drill, but think of it this way. Uh, 1 to the power of 2, which is 1. The second drill, or rather, to get the equivalent of the first drill times 2, you need 2 to the power of 2, so that's 4 drills. To get the equivalent of the first drill 3 times, you need 3 to the power of 2, so 9 drills. Uh, 16, 25, and so on. Oh, that's as far as we're going. Cool, cool, cool. Fantastic. Now let's perhaps run power over here. Does that work okay? I have a feeling it's not going to. So yeah, about 16 to 25, somewhere around there. I would say it stops being worth it. Because of the way drills work now with... Uh, you can't just place them wherever you want. They used to cost twice as much electricity. And there were no space elevators. Um, does that work? No, that's... That's no good. This will do, I guess. On second thought, I'd kind of prefer if it was linked up here, assuming it'll touch everything. It will not touch everything. This is fine. This is close enough. Okay. To the power of one half would be correct. Nani? Um, I guess we could run it across like this. Oh, hello. Old power poles out. I need to remove all this crap as well. Oh, that's a lot of iron. Oh, no. That's going to take a couple of trips. I don't really need to remove it, because when we do the trim, it's still going to be within the borders. But I don't love the thought of it just being there forever. Where's our drill? Our she blows. Fantastic. Actually, can I get away with straight vertical? I can. That'll look a lot more consistent. Forever, indeed. Five ever. So how many are we up to now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make that. That's going to be a bit more of a pain to change. Oh, so is this one. Maybe I should go to the trouble of getting it actually working before expanding it further. Normally I do the whole thing before that, but I guess there's no 
rules saying we need to do that. Um, let's make some room by dropping rail here. Did I just run out of fuel? No, we're good. And I think I want to use this one to grab... Oh yeah, don't forget I want to put the... What is it called? The umbrella up there. I was going to grab a train as a blueprint, but they're all... They're all wonky. Where's the third one, actually? Oh, here it is. It's also wonky. I probably have a blueprint for this somewhere already, but whatever. Oh, now I don't even know which one it is. There it is. In before, I've done this before. Wonky train, go fur. And it's going to sort of sort itself out. Okay. Fantastic. Wonderbar. Surashi. Do I have any charged power packs? I know the answer to this. They stack better when they're not charged for some reason. Do I not have power packs? Oh no. I see the filters requesting the power packs. I see... Only 20... I, I actually see zero... Um, regular power packs here. What? What happened here? What? What are you doing? You're kidding. What the hell was that about? Well, now we're like 600,000 years behind. I mean, I can come and get the charged power packs. But suffice to say, we will not be getting our trains moving on this trip. Give me some core drills. Actually, don't give me some core drills, because just placing them, even if they weren't powered, um, would slow down these ones. Maybe I shouldn't have turned this off yet. Cargo rocket section... Packed. We've got 550, 565. We've got more than five cargo rockets worth of maybe six cargo rockets. No, if none are landing here, we've got five cargo rockets worth. That's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah, we can keep this up for now. All right. So we already made that train, uh, and then it's gonna snap to it whether I like it or not. Let's just put this here, put the, <laughs> put this here, that kind of works. Is it in the way? No, nope, we're good. Uh, and I just need... is it G? Oh, it's V. Except it disconnects the wrong one first. And then we reconnect it, and then this is wrong again. Okay, now we're good. 
G and V. Keys that I've never used except by accident in Factorio until this exact use case. Disconnect and reconnect train parts. So I actually have to point it like this one and this one, otherwise if it, it, it's not that you point at this end, right? Um, if I want to connect this to this, and I point at this and press G, we end up with an extra long train. So we disconnect these, and then point here, G, point here, G. Pro tips, advanced strats. Alright. Let's finish... Upgrading the locomotives. This makes them faster, but also gives them better fuel efficiency. Because we get free acceleration. Very cool. What's not so very cool is not having any power packs. Maybe they got delivered up here, actually. Nope. This is the entire robot network. 56 ammo. Okay. Um, maybe I should see if I can fill this out with the landfill already. It's in here, isn't it? I could use all that coal and iron that's kind of useless, actually, as landfill, I forgot. That's actually going to be super handy. Nice. Alright, so let's say I want front left for the loader step. no. Front left for the loader station, and we'll put it Probably probably about here, just so that... Mm. It's going to use about the same amount of landfill regardless. Okay, let's put it here. And... I can at least see where the rail is. Save the fishies. By save, I mean we're not going to kill them with landfill. How many robots does this support? Only... 30. Okay, I think I should go for at least two robots, since I usually carry... Um, 50 bots. Okay, if I can see where these are... You know what, never mind, we're just going to go wider. I'm not going to, like... Try and find the exact spots where the bulk rail loaders fit. And like this. Close enough. Purple Landfill? What witchery is that? Uh, the mod is called Nicefill. Nicefill. Why can't I put this here? Cannot build on water. What are you... Co okay. Have it your way. Have it... Your... I'm going to try and do this without a shift click. 
There we go. Fantastic. And I put all of my rail away. Uh, let's just plan this out first. Oops, I squished a fish. I'm sorry, fishy. Copy one of these little corners. I'm still yet to run the experiment. Um, I keep wondering if having a more gentle corner has any effect whatsoever on how much speed we lose. Uh, in Factorio. I guess we could do that tomorrow. Alright, give me some more... Whoops. Give me some more rail. Not the fish, no. Indeed. John B. Good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that is actually lined up with each other. Very important that signals like this do line up. Um, but is it even possible to... It is with, with planning ghosts. So this will actually prevent the trains from going both ways if you do it like this. Uh, if you want them to go both ways, very important that they're lined up the same way. Corners don't slow down the train, do they? I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't slow them down at all. I haven't noticed any speed loss with circular crossings in vanilla with rocket fuel. Indeed. We can probably go faster than this. Oh, we're here. And what about... What about... Some kind of... Is this the spot? Some kind of perfectly measured max distance thingy like this. One off. Oh, the tragedy. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's right. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Fantastic. This lake with all the cliffs kind of makes me think of a volcano lake. Look at how hilly it is on the map in general. The whole planet. Lots and lots of uh, spots like that. Really kind of neat uh, map gen. Even if this map is, you know, as far as play, uh, actual play goes, it's a complete pain in the ass. Alright, uh, that actually covers everything. Fantastic. And that's when I realized I'd gone over time. So I might uh, continue this a little bit off stream, maybe not, because we're continuing tomorrow. But in any case, for now, let's find someone to raid. 0.7 will have even more unique planet environments. That would be awesome. Cool, cool, cool. I like it. 
let's check the old factorio. Um, good raid cyclo. It's been a minute. Oh, it's mucky stuff. I don't see mucky. Multiply shenanigans and no mucky. How sad. I don't see anyone doing uh, SE and or K2 either. Oh, Andy, C-O-E-3, K2. I think that's the multiplayer stuff. SE playthrough at 19. Oh, it's Rain. Oh, he must be just getting started, probably. Rain also, indeed. Let's drop in on Rain today. Why not? I do try to give people something similar to what they came for. Starting in 1 minute 20. Should we wait 1 minute and 20 seconds? Let's do that. I need to do my little finishing spiel anyway. Wait for electric storms and floods? Wait, what? In the video game? You must wait. Okay. Tell us a joke. I can't just randomly tell a joke on the spot. Slip second. Welcome, welcome. Alright. Uh, actually, while we're remembering, I should do this. SEK2 book. Export to string. And freeze. Uh, did I save my game? It's probably not that bad, right? I remember it taking a minute or two last time. It is getting to be a very big blueprint book. When was our last autosave? There we go. Alright, that's going in the Discord. Oh, good morning, everyone. Wow, the timing on that one. <laughs> 